Wake up, Joe Biden, wake up. American fellas, wake up. European fellas, wake up. Go out and work, bitch. Get your ass out there and I see a little shorty that's older than Asking her she don't count. Which is a step is down. Wish she could be. It's probably not what you want in the cure in the morning. Asking her when she don't count. Which is a step is down. Wish she could be like young. I don't wanna die, so I'm taking a chance. I can get money to advance. I've done a flight, now we going to France. Tell me out, I am not your man. Yes. I only got one shorty on my mind. And she wasting all my time. Tell her shorty, I need her in my life. She could be my girl. I see a little shiny dance over there. Uh, asking her when she don't count. Which is a step and stand. Or she could be my girl. Why am I streaming today? I didn't know that I wouldn't have much to do today. And I'm I'm free for the next couple of hours. And nowadays, I would rather jump on stream for like an hour, two, three, than just play video games. Because it's, I feel like it's more productive. So yeah, I guess. Yeah, don't forget to clock in. Today is a, I don't know what kind of a stream this is. It's a, it's a thing. We're gonna watch, I think, some more KO gaming reviews, some more KO gaming, um, some nonsense. I don't know. I don't know. We're just gonna hang out. <laughs> the stream last night, I mean yesterday, uh, got taken down because of Steven fucking Seagal. That son of a bitch. He took it down. Actually, didn't take it down. He blocked it in South Korea and worldwide on mobile. So if you were watching it on your phone, you couldn't. Now it's good though. Now you can watch it. Because I'm disputing it. Hello, chat. Welcome. Big up being here this early or late. Depends where you are. Help your boy out. I'm embarrassed of my KD. I'm just trying to make brandy. The point of my streaming is to make brandy and fuck diggers. Fuck, fuck, fuck diggers. I want a bitch that's so fat. Uh, those who are members. Just a couple of hours ago, actually, probably an hour ago, you got a new video, members only special, with uh, explaining the soundboard and where the some of the sounds come from. And I have one more in the works of uh, how I do the thumbnails. Since I've seen there's uh, quite a bit of people that enjoy them and laugh at them and I wanted to give you like a behind the scenes uh, look into how it works. And big ups to Australia. I was just thinking, you know what I was just thinking? I, I saw somebody with an Australian accent and I thought, dude, I don't think I've ever seen somebody on the internet with an Australian accent that was a bad person, that was an asshole. I don't think I've ever, even ever heard about it. I don't know why I thought about this, just one of those things that I talk about when I exist. When I exist outside of the stream. Baller alert, baller alert, ba 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 baller alert, call I need that money, I need that money, I need that money So fuck it, man I need that money, I need that money, I need that money Money, 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 money I come the fuck on, let's have a fuck Let's, 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 I come the fuck on, let's have a Yeah, last night's stream is back Because I'm disputing the claim For some reason, because it was like 30 seconds from a 3 hour stream and fucking asshole, to <laughs> asshole Steven Seagal snatched that motherfucker birthday, as he would say. Yo, what the fuck? Kill your fucking self. Bro. Uh, there was also this great clip, I would like to play it now before I forget. Uh, with the... Uh, oh no, this... Never mind. Never mind. He got trolled back in the day when he was doing the hate live stuff. And somebody asked him... Uh, somebody asked him, when are you gonna go tuck your daughter into bed? Uh. <laughs> All right, which one now? Oh, let's listen to J Pro. <laughs> J Pro Jump. I know you hate it, but it's a it's a very endearing song somehow. It's it's a guilty pleasure, definitely. I even like this the the video. And it's a good sign that you should jump out of bed 
and think about what you're gonna eat and invest in yourself. Said don't chase the money, let the money chase me Wouldn't be myself without the lessons I've seen Travis Scott, no Chase B, Rock Nation, Jay-Z City Girls, JT, Drizzy Drake, 40, Ice <laughs> I love the production in this video There's green screen, there's... Crazy uh, dreams Yeah, but it's the frame rate is too high It looks way too smooth What is this, 60? Yeah, it's 60 Why would you do it in 60? Do it in like 24 Makes him look more cinematic Now my family, they believe Leave. Now my mama she can see But they don't ask how I did it Cause they saw behind the scenes So I jumped out of bed What I'm gonna eat Accomplishing my tasks I rinse it and repeat my <laughs> The most uh The best waking up song ever There's no better waking up song than this Now I'm bursting at the seams Money growing steadily Said don't chase the money Let, let the money chase me wouldn't be myself without the lessons I've seen Travis Scott, no Chase B, Rock Nation, Jay-Z Guidance comes for shouting, I call my dad crying Defending me, Draymond Green, after that to say a thing I'm gonna do the same for my son, cause my dad built number one And I'm glad to say today, that I'm proud who I've become Yeah, the truth is that out of bed, oh no, never mind Peace that will not make me happy, that's the science of achieve Be the art of fulfillment while I'm grinding patiently I must be running towards my goals if I want money chasing me So I jumped out of bed What I'm about to eat I thought I was out the game Made a full recovery Porsche 911 like a tangerine Oh, let's go with some more songs And then, yeah so I jumped Then we're gonna start What I'm about to eat Accomplishing my tasks I rinse it and repeat My rocky cut scene started Oh, what a great fucking song What is this? Sim Oh yeah, this is a nice ass song. All the fucking New Age Black songs are great. They're really fucking good fuck for, for what they are. Suck my dick. That's why you're here watching me play Street Fighter. Because your ass could do it What did the guy play last night? Was it uh, Pokemon Arceus? We talked about you I should look up some highlights, I guess. Critique niggas that actually do things. Mars worker. KYS bitch. Oh no, it was Skyrim, of course. Fucking Skyrim. Alright. She be hugging me. She be sucking me. What is this, bro? Bro. I don't know why she makes me cry so deeply. Oh my god, she says she don't wanna fuck with me. So I show her that I'm gonna get it that money. Oh my god, she says she don't wanna fuck with me. Oh my god, oh my god. I'm a ball up on that batch. Show her how to get it. Now my head a fucking lip. Pop these perks, y'all. I'm gonna show our bar, yeah. I'm gonna show our bar, yeah. Fuck with me, I slip my wrist. Pop those perks out. I'm gonna drink clean, get over my shit, and fuck the next best, yeah. Oh yeah, I can totally play Pistol Grip next. All right, it's gonna be this Pistol Grip, and then we're gonna get started. We know our. Still wondering what would make for good content. I guess we're gonna watch some KO gaming reviews. I like watching reviews. Everything else is quite miserable. She be hugging I don't know why she makes me cry so deeply. She says you don't wanna fuck with me. So I show her that I'ma get it that money. Oh my god, she says you don't wanna fuck with me. Oh my god, oh my oh my god. She said she don't want me no more. She said she it's like the new no content, the, the new DSP content is just like infuriating. And the old shit, uh, I've already talked about it plenty. I was thinking of doing like a kind of remastered commentary, I guess, to a lot of the stuff that was the first couple of streams that I did. Like the first streams ever. Because uh, it's the lesser known stuff. And actually, it's not lesser known stuff. It's kind of the most hype DSP lore. But it was like my first shit. So I guess I could bring it back up someday and do like a remastered thing of it. But yeah, I haven't. I don't know. I don't know. 
Because there's like, if you want to watch DSP and make fun of him, there's uh, an actual decade of content that you can go and watch and make fun of. That's basically about it. Now let's get up uh, the pistol grip up in here and get it over with. All right. Because like he, his new shit is, especially shit like yesterday. I I didn't even know where to start with with the like criticizing him and shitting on him. Because it's just a sentence after a sentence that is just full of shit. Delusional guy who just lives on Twitter. What am I supposed to say to this? Way too fucking toxic. Because this is about positivity after all. We take the, the negativity and we turn it into positivity. We turn that frown upside down. We turn the stroke face into a happy face. I would destroy your face. Pulverize would destroy your face. Pulverize. You know people don't like fat people. You've seen people isolate you because and there's this one great video uh, there's this one great video about DSP being a narcissist but it's three hours long and I wanted to do a what I would call the narcissism special and and actually do like one of those online tests about am I a narcissist about DSP and shit like that uh, in the realm of entertainment of course I'm not licensed or certified to talk about narcissism or shit like that but there's a great video about it that is pretty uh, that is very nice it's by uh, Baxter Zevchenko it's one of his couple of videos uh, yeah it's by this guy he made it reclusive and rented it's it's like what a three and a half hour thing and it's great, but it's uh, it's for a different time. It's not for today. Bro, my neighbors for real are, are drilling right now. It just decided to start drilling. Fucking nice. And yeah, DSP had like five, six people in his chat yesterday. So I guess this is the end of the intro. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Let me get everything back on the screen. Um, this is the stream you know and love, I guess. Oh, it's 5 a.m. That's great. That's great. You should jump out of bed right now. You're having more more of the day, so you can't complain like DSP. Allegedly, he fell asleep last night. He, he kind of fell asleep on stream. I'm not even sure at this point. Let me see my Twitter, perhaps. Uh, never mind. We're not going to do Twitter because he didn't do anything. It didn't actually do anything. Now, uh, this is it. Welcome. Hello. Hello. And welcome to this stream. Uh, what I have ready today is first we're going to go through the daily wrap because yesterday I just stayed for one of his streams. I, I don't watch his late shit anyways because, I mean, let's get real. Nobody does outside of the dudes that restream it that are just the regular dudes that restream it and just some a couple more pay pigs. He had like five, six people in his chat. It's actually very fucking funny. Um, what else happened? I don't know. This is a daily wrap. According to him, it's a great chill day for once. Which apparently all the other days that were that he made over $200 during, they weren't great and chill. But this is the fucking guy. When something good happens to him, it's uh, he forgets it. And if something bad happens to him, he got to hold it like a, a massive thing that happened for a long time. Good evening, uh, everyone. Welcome to the yeah, for the Baxter video, I know there's timestamps. I've, I've gone through it, and it's a fantastic video. And that's why I think I should, um, I guess, kind of, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I, would, I would get the best of it if I watched the whole thing. I, I want to give him the, the credit he deserves by watching the actual whole video. And not just the part that's about DSP. Because the whole video is extremely interesting. Uh, to just get an inside look of, of narcissism and, and how it works from, you know, just the, the perspective of some guy that doesn't know anything about it. And that's why I'm curious about it. And that's, what I'm, that's why I'm making these videos on DSP and shit like that. Because I just want to figure out how it all works. What made him the way he is... What made people that give him money and support him the way that they are? 
um, even knowing full well that they're supporting his terrible habits that help him ruin his life. I just want to figure out what makes it, it do that and have some fun in the process. Uh, big ups, Paypick Destroyer for the $5 Super Chat. Big ups, the main reason I love your stream is because of how real you are. At the end of the day, we're just really here to have a good time. Exactly, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Just want to have some chill, look at this guy, make fun of him in a way that is sort of productive. So we try and brainstorm ways of which he can get better. We give him some some ideas of how he can make his stream better. It's like, you know, it's in a productive perspective. And also we make fun of him, which is fun. Because he's really easy to make fun of. So this is the daily rap. Welcome to the daily rap. This is from yesterday. Today was a pretty good day, man. So we started off today with an interesting pre-stream podcast where I just How was it interesting? He was massively Oh, this fucking this guy sucks ass. And I'm pretty sure he he also drank. I'm pretty sure he drank. Today was a pretty good day, man. So we started off today with an interesting pre-stream podcast. Pre-stream, okay, I'm gonna sum summarize this. Uh, yes, uh, hold on. I'm gonna summarize what happened yesterday. He ranted about games coming out that doesn't suit his schedule. He ranted about Guardians of the fucking Galaxy and other like completely bullshit things. He ranted about YouTube not implementing gifted memberships two months into the year. And a lot of other nonsense, but it was terrible. It was genuinely was bad. I discussed the topic of how marketing, social media hype, and release timing can distinctively affect how a game is received and how a game sells. We talked about basically the entire last month how because there were so many games that came out in a shortened period of time that some games seem to have gotten overly hyped so yeah, this is basically what he talked about. Entirely after. Yeah, big ups everybody in chat that just joining this early unscheduled type stream. And of course now, with the release of Elden Ring, literally all of social media is. Hey, open. massive, massive thanks and shout out to Kobold for the fifty dollars super chat. Baller alert! B -b -b Baller alert! Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, he says, "I haven't tipped in a while. Appreciate you not raging or getting too worked up." That sort of tractor content is good, but it can stress me out after a while. I I understand this this idea uh, that uh, you can't get too worked up on DSP. And I was thinking about this this morning, I think, about the the fact is like you can get pissed that he gets all this money. You can get angry. It's totally I I would understand why because you see it as kind of an injustice or whatever, or that it's not fair or that it's stupid. I, I understand it completely, but I think it's also better for you in in like a personal sense to just look at it from the perspective of just some guy that is just so in denial about his life that he's in, in a completely different fucking universe. And uh, different people have their different reactions to, to the shit he does. Uh, but at some point when the leaks dropped, I completely zoned out of how much money he got. Because no amount of money is always, is never going to make him satisfied. No amount of money, ever. And this is kind of how it works. So you got to just look at it from a comedy perspective. And I've said many times that these streams are just me watching reality shows with, uh, just like I would do in real life with my friends. And we just hang out and we watch a fucking TV show and we make fun of it with the exact idea that he is a TV show that he invented and he made. And, and that's it. Um, and yeah, it can get too worked up because even if I do, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. He's still going to get money. Even if I get way too worked up, he might even get even more money because some of his pay pig might see me getting worked up and give him money so I can get more worked up. So there's no point. There is no point. Legit talking about the game and he's just like not even a really harmful person because there are people that exist uh and i've said him a thousand times onision is a fucking asshole he's he's a harmful guy that i legit can't fucking watch uh because he pisses me off because he's fucking terrible he gets away with everything so yeah i i understand this so yeah the bottom line is you can watch him any way I want, uh, any way you want. I watch him as a reality show because he is one, and he is real. 
and uh yeah it's, it's fun so yeah oh yeah j station j station exists as well he's the same black fucking asshole and so I yeah those are the people that actually frustrate me and, and piss me off and i don't watch them i don't really like engage with them because there's no point to get pissed off i also compared that and with this guy is i get pissed off but then i laugh at it at, at how like funny it is that that he exists it is just funny. It is chill. Guardians of the Galaxy situation from last year, a game that was absolutely outstanding, but due to insanely bad marketing by Square Enix, the game sold incredibly poorly, which actually is a big news story recently that Square Enix said as much, and now that game is actually going to be part of Microsoft Game Pass. So, tons of... He lied, by the way. He was fake as fuck. Uh, yesterday, he baited me into thinking that, uh, that Guardians would be on PlayStation Plus. Which actually it's not, it's on Game Pass, and I don't have Game Pass. So thanks for the misinformation, dumbass. And also, also, somebody called him out in chat, and he mocked them while quote-unquote accepting guilt. An in -depth discussion. It was like, yeah, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Ah, it's such a big deal, it's on, it's on Game Pass, not on PlayStation Plus. Yeah, on today's podcast, um, today's main gameplay stream was Horizon Forbidden West, and... I had opportunity to actually stream extra. So instead of my usual three hours of gameplay, I streamed four hours of gameplay. We got really far in the game today. We started off where I had left off about a week ago, packing a tall neck in the middle of the desert. Oh, he did like Guardians. He liked Guardians a lot because the the story was good. He cried at it twice. I think the combat, he said it was like serviceable or whatever. And that's what I've seen uh, people on Twitter say as well. To the main Do you see, I say people on Twitter, not people on social media. Oh, Even though I, I use way more social media than, than he does. Of the Tanakh tribes, le uh, meeting their chieftain, and figuring out that we needed to do quite a lot of stuff in order to actually get to the next AI that we wanted to put into Gaia. So we ended up going north, meeting the sky people, doing all kinds of missions there, then coming back to the to the hub fighting a ginormous combat uh, situation. I don't want to really spoil what it was because it was pretty epic. We fought multiple ginormous new robotic monsters today, which is really cool. And then we had a big story finale. So in four hours, tons of advancement in the game. I would argue we might have gotten, like, no lie, 20% of the story in one sitting. That's how much it Well, was. that's pretty crazy. I don't know. I still haven't figured out if, because I didn't play it myself, I still haven't figured out if Forbidden West is genuinely like a really good game or it's one of those games where it just looks great and, you know, it's an open world and it's engaging and it's kind of a sequel. It has the sequel uh, effect. I don't really know. Uh, let me guys, uh, uh, let me know you guys in chat, yeah. whoever's playing it. Because I've seen on, uh, and of course it's the initial hype on Twitter that, that just happens with, with major games where it's just like people posting screenshots, comparing everything to the best games ever to like, um, to comparing it to The Witcher, comparing it to, wow, this is such like an amazing experience and this and this and this. And I don't disagree with them, but it's also the, the, the hype effect where, you know, you have this uh, little honeymoon period with a game where you love everything about it and then it kind of, it kind of unveils. Uh, just like I felt with um, uh, with the Dying Light 2, which for the first maybe 20 hours I thought was fantastic, and then it kind of became too easy. I started seeing the, the cracks in the game, and then it kind of fell apart a little bit. But I still think it's, it's a solid, like a 7 out of 10, I guess. Just following along, do you really think that Horizon did better this week than it did last week? No. In fact, I would argue even worse no. because... Everyone wants to see Elden Ring now, which I knew would happen. I told you guys last week, this is exactly what would happen. As soon as Elden Ring came out, all I, I mean, half the people coming to the stream today were saying, hey, where's Elden Ring? Why no Elden Ring? Uh, they compared it to The Witcher because of the side quests. Because, you know, in The Witcher, they have these nice fleshed out side quests that all feel like they're, you know, uh, a separate story that is a meaningful story. And nowadays we have this debate very often when... Uh, we talk about side content and meaningful side content, which is a very subjective term. So that's why we, we talk about it all that much on Twitter and shit, where people don't really figure out what is meaningful because it's really subjective. Because apparently DSP's content is meaningful to somebody. Um, apparently. I do want to say this. For those oh, by the way, as you might notice, 
on my stream, DSP's video looks much sharper and actually better. Uh, that's because it is because I put a sharpening effect on on the video. So it in in reality, now I'm gonna give you a, a side by side comparison. In reality, he looks like this, blurry beyond belief. And when I sharpen him up, he looks sharp as fuck. Look at this; it looks almost HD. And yeah, and we're even watching him on what 720. And then the 1080 is the same thing because it's just upscaled. There is nothing, nothing different. It's simply 720. I might even put it on 480 and nothing changes. Uh, I don't know. This looks a little bit uglier, I guess. But anyways. You who were there live for the streams, thank you. I really appreciate that. You prefer blurry? When it wasn't Elden Ring today, <laughs> but also that this game is an ongoing really uh... game for me. I really like Horizon Forbidden West, and I do feel it's one of the best games of the year so far. Okay, um, it was sad. supposed to be. That viewership plummets for it. I had, at one point, under 200 viewers, and there's nothing I can do. I'm playing the game and enjoying it. Uh, what is limiting his quality? I would guess it's his PC. Be uh, I mean, his webcam to begin with is bad. That's uh, that's kind of the thing. The, his webcam is bad, and period. But I think also it's his PC limiting him from, just like it happened to me, limiting him from using uh, a good camera but that's just like complaint because 90 percent of his fucking setup is uh, is is super unoptimized and not very practical and not very usable and good and that's basically it he can if he actually takes advantage of all the tech that he has and sell off all the nonsense that he doesn't need he's gonna be way better and his office is going to free up and all the cables are going to go away and his life is going to change. And if he does what I did and use that uh, XSplit VCAM software for automatic green screen, he would fucking win the game. But he's never going to do this because from, from him thinking about doing it and him actually going through with doing it, in between there is probably 10 to 15 excuses that would completely prevent him from doing anything like that so no it's not gonna happen or you know the story developments it's not like there's anything i can do to change what the game is but for some reason it just doesn't catch on with, with my viewing audience in general what i will say is this if you are going to be watching the playthrough on demand ongoing on youtube please like the videos and please leave comments all right, let's let's do a quick little analysis of why people wouldn't care about him playing Horizon. And uh, while we're doing this, I can just pull up a video of him playing Horizon. Now, let's think about what kind of a game it's, is Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West is a third-person action platformer RPG-ish game with action and combat. Now, the combat is based on being kind of open in allowing you to um to approach different encounters in a way that you see fit whether you can put traps you can put uh, you can use the rope caster you can use a variety of tools and it's also a game where you explore a lot and uh when you explore a lot you want to be with somebody pl playing the game who can add fun commentary who can talk about a lot of stuff as you can see dsp right now is just looking at chad uh you want to hang out with somebody who is fun and uh, you can have a nice time when, when he's just roaming around the world, getting better, getting new gear. He talks to Chad and you, you just have fun. Uh, so the main things that I got from what I just said is that it's a game that encourages exploration, creativity, and curiosity. He has none of those. Creativity, curiosity, they don't exist in, in the world of Dark Side Phil. Uh, for him, the games that are best to be played is those linear movie games like the supermassive games like uh, Man of Medan and Until Dawn and stuff like that. That's the kind of shit that, that he loves to play. That's the shit that he would pick up. Because it lets him just press X to move forward. It just lets him just breeze through the game. And these aren't really any of those games, especially this. And with a game like this, you just want a guy who would kind of care about about it a little bit more because this uh this video there isn't actually a lot of a ton of gameplay in this there's a lot of cutscenes though and yeah he's not creative not interesting he can't fill the dead air is just basically tour guide phil when he plays the game when he looks around is just him being a tour guide because he's just walking around spamming the focus he's legit spamming the focus oh no okay 
reads through all this text, which is, I don't know, um, I'm conflicted whether or not to say it's a good thing to read through this text or not, because it, it breaks apart your pacing. Uh, what else do we got? It's just like jumping around. Otherwise, and she basically, that was the beginning of a revolt against the military. And just not very interesting. That's why I think it didn't catch on. And this one has like 261 views for seven hours. That's not good. So we might have figured it out. However, my explanation is that it's his fault for not being engaging and interesting. Uh, that's my explanation. And he's not going to want to take this. He would rather think that it's anything else, that the game is the way that it's made. The game is like the first one. And uh, coincidentally, I have pulled up the KO Gaming Review of Horizon Zero Dawn, which we're going to watch after this. Uh, because it's a mixed bag, apparently. The, the, the like-to-dislike ratio is quite mixed. So we'll never know. Barely. It's good or it's bad. Barely hitting the 100 likes um, that I'm looking to get on every stream. This is so sad, though. Engagement up on DSP Gaming. Engagement up. Could. Bro, if you're gonna beg for likes, at least make it interesting. Make it interesting, because you can gamify anything. And you can make anything interesting and fun. Uh, boring shit like dropping likes can be... I don't know. You can have a likes goal where you put something else. You can put on a badge. Like like my, my old idea with the, the badge goal. Where he has a vest and then he can put badges on every 25 bucks or $20 or whatever. He can do that. Uh, but no, he would rather just ask for it instead. And when he hits the likes goal, it's just like, congratulations, we did it. Well, it doesn't necessarily work like that. Give him some reward. Just like you... Oh, yeah, he can blow bubbles. That's a good idea. He can blow bubbles just like he used to do. Please help out. Or he can spin in his chair like he also used to do. By putting that engagement on the on-demand videos. And of course, as always, if you want to help out with this playthrough, because I'll tell you right now, the Horizon playthrough is not doing well on the streams, as you'll see when you watch the videos. You know, income wise and stuff. Did I see? I, I didn't look at the at the tip goal or whatever. Let him let him talk. Supplementary uh support for the streams. Uh just take check out the description of the videos. You'll see links to things like being able to tip me and stuff like that. And I appreciate that if you would do that, okay? Um Oh yeah, it got sixty nine dollars. Which is not super positive. Great stream tonight. In fact, we did a ton of stuff tonight. Yeah. Um continued out with the Thieves Guild. Uh, and had a little plot twist that I did not remember from my original run 10 years ago. Um, actually arrived in Mark Hearth, which then meant there was a Forsworn. He's super twitchy. The, the way that he's twitchy is like he's having a withdrawal from something. It's it's very, very weird. Conspiracy that unlocked that we started. The way he just like, he has to move all the time. He can't just stay peacefully in one place for a little bit. It's just twitchiness all the time. And there was a Daedric quest from Alec Ball that we did. So we did a lot today. We did, we did a lot today in Skyrim. Great chill stream, good interaction. Again, I hate to say it, since Skyrim went from day streams to night streams, essentially the support has been more than half on the streams. So again, if you're enjoying the Skyrim playthrough on demand, the support's on YouTube, been more than a half. Like the videos, <laughs> leave comments, let me know what you But think. I thought it was a great chill day for once, but he's begging. This is the type of chill this is. It's a great chill day for once, but please give me money. Tipping or becoming a member, or whatever it may be. There's no way. It, even though today was a great day, <laughs> overall, I had a ton of fun on the streams today. It was actually a slow day for income. And it's kind of like, it sucks that when I'm a variety streamer, that just because there's one game that seems to be get stealing all the hype, that... Oh, my God. I've heard this excuse like 60,000 times. Forgotten. I, I counted every yeah, each one I of them. I want to put out a variety of content for you guys. I don't want to just play Elden Ring every single freaking stream. I want variety. I want to keep up with these great games. Um, it is disheartening when I play them and then all of a sudden, you know, the income is very slow for that day. Now, the good news here is I am going to alternate things up. I'll let me give you some perspective. Tomorrow, Dude, Blooper doesn't have early streams. For him, for him, those streams are late. And it's always, we always judge it by whoever is making the stream as time zone. So for me, this is an early stream. But if you were American, it would be a late stream. But... For Blooper, when he streams at this time, it's a late stream. And for me, it's an early stream. You know what I mean? It's very, very deep. Turning on the <laughs> stream, hopefully we can get the hype back, get some support back, and keep that moving. <clears throat> Tomorrow night, Always early, dude. Arceus, okay? We bust too early. 
It will be Horizon Forbidden Nice, guys. Again, Bust so early. The return of Friday Night Fights, which you guys always attended and supported in droves. You love the old school Street Fighter coverage, I do, and it returns this Friday night. I love this cult talk. You guys always do this. You love it. You love it. Please come. Please come watch it. And then Elden Ring. This is a schedule segment. This is worthless. And in the end, he's probably going to beg again. Oh, the community tab. Oh, fuck this. I, I forgot this was a thing. The new change that I instituted yesterday seems to have gone over well. I'm going to start posting up my daily schedule for streams right here on DSP Gaming on the community tab every night. Oh, yeah, Jax. I forgot Jax Raxer. He's the, the main number one pay pig of all time when it comes to fighting games. Probably not of all time, but for now. People seem to really enjoy it last night and said yeah. it's good because I, I like everything in one place. If your videos, streams, and schedule are all in one place, it's a no-brainer. You know, it's, it's an old brainer like, like cat. Mentioned is over a decade ago. You all right, DSP, stop talking about YouTube for over a decade ago. And now did did he post it? Yeah, here he is, four hours ago, and he got what thirty likes, uh, for his community post, because apparently people can't just go on on Twitter to see his fucking. I don't know why you would even want to see this. Why would you care so much about what he's playing the whole week? I don't know, but I, I guess streamers do this, so Phil has to do it as well, but as everything, he has to do it in a way that's infinitely worse than what everybody does, and then claim it's better than what everybody does, and then fail. YouTube allowed you to just paste up your schedule. There was a section on your YouTube channel just for that, and I used to always post up my Oh, the, the blind-friendly schedule, that's the audio schedule. But please, please don't give him any ideas of posting the audio schedule on YouTube as well. Because he will. And then you're going to get six videos a day from Phil and two community posts every single fucking day. Outside of Monday, which is the day off. Oh, also from yesterday, um, I, remem uh, I just remembered the new intro. DSP has a new intro because he is epic. And uh, the new intro again has my song in it which is even more epic. So now I have one of my songs in each his intro and his outro. And uh, there it is. Now, uh, a lot of those references, I couldn't actually figure out where they came from. Like, this is my song. This is the beat for the Slow Day song. It's on uh, SoundCloud. And then we get this, the Joe Rogan Experience logo, which is great. I don't think DSP actually knows where the, the source of this. But it's DSP. Let's get right into the news. Now, oh, this is the this is the Keemstar reference. This is a Keemstar reference. Let's get right to the news. Oh no, it, and it's mocking Keemstar. Gaming news wise, there's not much going on right now. Crap games. And here there was some flashing images. I'm trying to figure out where all the memes came through. Wait, let me go frame by frame. There's flashing images here on the top left TV. And I'm trying to find out who is on those images. Is it some anime lady, right? Somebody tried to pull a sneaky on DSP. Oh, there was a Hogan. That was the Hogan, a hundred percent. That was a Hogan. And then what, what, what is he saying? The sales went from up here to almost non I, I love the audio design also. The music is louder than Phil. It captures the personalities of each of the Guardians to a T. <laughs> this is from DSP's uh, The Best Games of the Year, I guess. Yet also kind of funny. Oh, use Dot in this. Oh, yeah, I can go frame by frame. Big ups, uh... ProxyCon for telling me how to do this frame by frame. Now we're gonna get a science segment because I, I desperately want to figure out what is on this one frame. Because it was a sneaky one. It's not your your regular trolling that is very obvious and it completely goes over its head. It's uh it's very, very sneaky. Okay, it's gonna be here somewhere, right? Okay, frame by frame. The scientific stream. Okay. I need to press it legit 30 times so it can go to the next one. <laughs> but it works, dude. It works. Come on. Give me the Hogan. Show me the Hogan. I wonder if they took the, the same Hogan that was on the, the champions thing. 
Ah, come on, I got scammed again. Alright. So it's before this. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay. I just need to go back a minute. Oh, okay. So we have this looks like an anime girl type of situation. Let me see if I could enhance it. Like, legit enhance it. Uh, yes, I can. This is what I'm looking at. It, it looks kind of like an anime girl. I don't know if what it's supposed to be and then it flashes for a little bit and then we had before that we had a hulk hogan let's get right into the news okay somewhere here we we got the hogan we got flashes of this lady then we got the joe rogan logo oh here here he is it was legit a hogan here here he is the hulkster a nice couple frames of the hulkster and yeah, this is it. Busted. Right now, crap game. After about three or four years, so we crash. And what I mean by that is... Oh, he gets cucked every day. And the thing is, these intros are not even good. As in, like, high production value, high quality shit. That you are willing to take the, the loss of having it being troll content as long as it's good. But it's not even good. Almost non-existent. Captures the personalities of each of the guardians to a T. Draft. Sweet. Yet also kind of funny. Matter of fact, kind of god. Uh, you know, aura. Beautiful, gorgeous environment. And, and this great fucking clip. I don't know why. I don't know. Because you know when somebody in chat tells him that it's a troll video, he's gonna say that he that he looked at it he saw it he knew what was in the video but then why would you let him put this kind of gameplay in it because this is infamous gameplay from forza because look at what he's gonna do in this gameplay clip he's gonna look at chat and then he's gonna crash miser miserably okay. look at this looking at chat crashing drunk driving fucking segment and of course, on the side, there's weird text that says, I always supply honest, in-depth reviews. Which, yeah, okay, you didn't have to lie. What is Phil's day off? <laughs> it's terrible. And this same bit, this same bit I used as an intro uh, to my song, Day Off. Soundcloud.com, I think I'm logged in. Or probably not. Never mind. Uh, fuck it. All right, I'm gonna show you this exact clip. Ah, fuck. Never mind. Uh, let me just see. Oh, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time. It's exactly the same sample. Segment that everyone looks Bill's to day off. Segments of all time that I've ever done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Phil's day off. Phil's day off. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. The same clip. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fucking nice, man. I love this. Big ups to uh, whoever did this. It's funny. Always chill with Phil, always chill with Phil. And it's just like like top text, bottom text. Absolutely. Oh, and these TVs? Now, if I gotta be a scientist, what I will do is I will look up Lil Richie and Ludwig uh, World Order. And I think, if I'm actually factually correct, one of those in the video uses exactly the same tv layout as this exactly the same i don't know if i can find it uh little rich oh yo there's a for real a real a real little richie guy it's not just wings oh fuck oh yeah i think it's uh i think it's this one i think it's yeah you see the same tv oh it's not the same tv but it's the at some point it was i think here somewhere it is something like this. Everything was right. Everything correct. I did nothing wrong. Oh yeah, you guys said it in chat. I wasn't looking. I'm sorry. It was three kings. So yeah, this is the the science segment is done.
<laughs> and there was a little begging segment. Now this logo that is fucking nice. And then we get a boomer. He always gets those fucking wrong. Because he played this in the middle of the podcast as well. By accident. This is how great he is. Now, we transition into the channel that you all love. The, the Knockout Gaming special vlog video type thing. Uh, a beautiful story you've already played. Horizon Zero Dawn Review by KO Gaming. Now, as you can see, this the feedback to this review is a mixed bag. So let's see what he liked about it, what he didn't like about it, and let's make fun of him, as usual. And yeah. What is up, everyone? Phil Hello, Renee. What's up? And welcome to KO Gaming. Welcome to this My early stream. Horizon Zero Dawn, the PlayStation 4 exclusive game that everyone's been buzzing about for the past week or so. Yeah, he and legit, he legit manually placed his intros and his outros because he's too dumb to set up a transition and to set them up as a transition. So when he changes his layouts, it's going to play automatically. Playing about 10 hours of gameplay, yeah. I made a first impressions video about Horizon right here on KO Gaming. So of I course. strongly recommend you check did the that thing. video out before you watch this full review. He did the thing that up and coming YouTubers do where you play for a couple of hours, then you make a, 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 a first impression video, which is a good thing to do. If you're trying to get noticed, I guess, do that on like day one. Play, play 10 hours on the first day and then release a first impression I'm gonna be reiterating a lot of the things from that video but i have now played yeah he, he did edit the the, the snorts in this one insane amounts of money like dirty rotten this is way too much fucking money for just playing video games kind of money big up scoot hustler for the for, for the five dollar uh gravy train moment baller alert baller. And uh, he says, Grug will butcher upcoming racers, specifically DoorDash Turismo 7, but he will give us some great bacon bits while failing the license test to become a super dasher. First of all, shout out to our boy Grug. Shout out to your buddy Grug. And uh, second of all, I, I can't agree with you more, man. I watched the trailer for the, the Gran Turismo 7, and it's it, it says on the game, on, on the title, under the title, it says a, a, a driving simulator. So it's going to be very leaning in on the actual simulation of driving a car and not the 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 casual you know just just the arcadey feel of driving a car so yeah a thousand percent it's gonna be terrible if you saw his his forza gameplay this is gonna be much much worse but it looks good man first of all the graphics were great 14 or so hours finished up both the main story as well as completed many of the major side questing arcs of the game and i have a lot to talk about does this game live up to the massive hype that the mainstream media and even independent reviewers were giving it or was it overhyped and does it really just seem to be getting way more attention than it deserves let's talk about the pros and cons of horizon from the start First off, no one's going to deny that Horizon is a beautiful game, and especially on the PlayStation 4, where typically when you have a console and it's the nerfed version of the game, since this game was designed exclusively for this console by Guerrilla Games, who, by the way, were previously known for games such as Killzone. Shout out to Guerrilla Games, Dutch game developer. The graphics I think. absolutely right? sell. You've got a steady 30 frames per second in most right? cases. Yes, every once in a while during a heavy Yeah, Amsterdam. Fight, Shout out to Amsterdam. Bit, but for the most part, popping isn't really noticeable, except for in a few parts. As you're running through this beautiful post-apocalyptic open world, you're going to see breathtaking environments, on the fly, weather changes, <laughs> night changes. And he gets so winded because it's all one take. He couldn't pause the recording. Like, actually pause it transitions and uh, it's so terrible games. man I absolutely love that you can look out on the landscape similar to say final fantasy 15 and you can see things way out in the distance that if you actually walk there you can climb it i absolutely love that it's not like invisible walls and things are rampant in this game instead the open world is there for you to explore right from the get-go and the graphics really do hold up to a 2017 standard so two thumbs up there the actual gameplay content of horizon zero dawn is varied You've got a main quest. The gameplay is varied. 12 to 15 hours to beat. <laughs> and it's just these reviews. There's a massive part of them that is just explaining what the game is. Which, I, I get it. You kind of have to do this. But do it in like a 30 seconds or so. You can say it's your, your standard open world exploration game with stealth and action adventure mechanics and crafting and collection stuff. That's all you gotta say. And people already know what, is, what it's about. 
it's one of those games and those games are very popular so you don't need to explain that the game has main quests and the game has side quests that you can go and do and you can also do other stuff if you just stuck to that come on there's also a lot quick. of side content which is like uh if you watch zero punctuation you would know what a, a jiminy cockthroat game would mean it's exactly this and that's why yahtzee created this term for all the games that are this your your regular run-of-the-mill stealth action exploration with crafting kind of goes off the beaten path especially since at the beginning of the game once you get through the three hour introductory segment you're tossed into the open world of horizon and you're able to wander pretty much the entire map i, I, I do agree with his snorts i think he partially is obnoxious to piss off the trolls because he knows that trolls make a big um a big part of his audience uh, clearly he knows that people are restreaming him every day whether that be dark dave or that would be Frogo, or would it be me or ann lead or piece of peace or tevin he knows that somebody's watching and somebody's gonna get irritated if he leans into the microphone and makes a massive snort and and we're at the point where he cares more about what the trolls will think and their reactions than his actual fans who are also probably grossed out going to be much higher level enemies and things around that are going to kill you really quickly if you wander into the end game oh yeah he, he also does hate his normal audience because he knows they're all dense he knows they are all dense there's no way he doesn't know that these people are all like social outcasts and and rejects and people that are weird and fucking bizarre so he knows it and he hates it because he expects to attract uh, intelligent and, and meaningful people with his intelligent and meaningful content. But no, he attracts only the kind of people that would naturally be attracted to this, and it's dense. And eventually, the normal intelligent people that give him the benefit of the doubt to watch his gameplays and shit and his streams, they realize that they don't like him. And he goes somewhere else. Uh, they go somewhere else behooves you to kind of stick around to the earlier parts and do a lot of side missions in order to gain extra experience points to level up your abilities side quests are very some of them oh, are the side simple. quests are varied okay cutter kind of for an open world game like this including fetch quests and oh go find this random person who's stranded in the wilderness and is probably her kind of quest where you go out and fend off some enemies and bring them back to camp you know pretty wash wins and repeat here from stuff you've done in other games there's also hunt quests where you hunt certain types of the robotic animals in the game and you learn their weaknesses these are okay but they definitely get boring after a few and then you've got the weapons training which is literally just get a certain amount of kills with a certain type of weapon yeah those are pretty much there just to give you experience padding so out of all that I would say that's kind of most of the boring side content, at least in my opinion, of Horizon Zero Dawn. But there were three different other kinds of content that I really enjoyed. First of all, the tall necks. These are giant robots. Yeah, this is great. Giraffes. This was great. This was probably the most fun I've had in the game. Scan that'll reveal areas of the your most map fun. All kinds of different. Because there's just something, something that is really inherently cool about climbing something that is moving. You know, like uh. Like that scene in, in Uncharted with the plane where you, you got to make your way through the plane and everything. And it, it's moving. And it's just more fun and more dynamic. That's why I liked it a lot. And I'm not surprised he liked it a lot. Waypoints and things and different missions to do. So this is neat. Think of it as like an Assassin's Creed when you climb a tall building and you scan around. Think of it as this different game. Exactly the same thing here, only it's a little bit more creative because the tall next- Yeah, Shadow of the Colossus around. as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Find a way that's a good to one. Position yourself to jump and scale- It's kind of that things. thing. It's not so easy. There's also the cauldrons. These are unique mini dungeons that are all roboticized on the inside. Oh, these I, I didn't like at all. Them, thought it was boring as fuck. Ending with a pretty epic boss fight, you'll gain the ability to mind control certain robotic animals so not only do you get a little mini dungeon with cool enemies and a setup that's unique and a lot of experience points and loot but at the end you also gain a really powerful ability so those are some of the coolest things for sure and then of course there is the meaningful side questing that you could completely meaningful miss side quest zero dawn doesn't tell you when a significant side quest is significant or if it's what? Just another boring fetch quest and what the fuck does that even mean a significant side quest do you think they have them um they have them separate there's two or three ah, this ridiculous horizon zero dawn that if you don't do them you'll never even meet these major characters you could completely gloss over it as maybe this is going to be hey big ups to uh lugano x for the super chat uh meerkat first of all the graphics look great your streams help me go through the daily grind my boring job becomes becomes fun interactive chill fun fun 
Well, I'm I'm uh, very happy about this. Thank you very much. Baller alert. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be carrying the legacy of people that I've used to watch in the past that are not around that much because I as well was in this position where I would bike to work listening to somebody shit on Phil and it was a fun time and then I was like, dude, I should shit on Phil and now I'm having a fun time and I'm glad that you are as well. You guys love this and the graphics are great. Boring side quest. Next thing you know, you're off doing bodyguard duty for a royal family, or you're doing all. I should get some music stuff. in the background. That's really fun and interesting, and leads to some of the biggest fights of the game. I definitely like those, and I compare them to the same amount of quality as to say some of the major side quests in Witcher 3 from a few years back. So definitely the side quest. And you see again, he was comparing it to Witcher 3 way before it was popular to compare it to Witcher 3, and now it's the hip. Th the, now it's the good thing. Dude, they have such cool side quests it's like The Witcher 3. If you're looking to do all of it, you could probably get, no lie, upwards of 40 to 50 hours out of Horizon Zero Dawn, and that's a hefty amount of content for a game release in the year 2017, but at the same time... Yeah, Steve the Dead is uh, probably not watching this right now, but shout out to him. He does really go in depth. I know it's a meme that he makes long videos, but for the things that he says is, is very much justified. Because sometimes you gotta make a long video to talk about something because you have a lot to say. And DSP makes long videos talking about stuff because he has nothing to say. You gotta understand that kind of the situation. Side content is really there just to pad the game. So it's really up to you ultimately what you want to do. Now the actual combat and or gameplay of Horizon seems to be a unique mishmash of elements taken from other successful game franchises. For example, the combat is primarily oh, it's gonna shit on it based about being uh, originality. Of like rope casters and traps and things that you'll use over the course of the game. Your primary method of dealing damage and self-defense is using a bow and arrow. This is very similar to the Yeah, this is not it didn't get me especially shooting at people was the worst part of the game. It was so boring. Cuz shooting at monsters, not monsters, but the the animals, the enemies, the other enemies. Years as well. It's as much as better than this. And this is just like no. All of a sudden maybe the second game is better, but no. So that you have the opportunity to But I would still say this game is worth picking up or cuz I got it cuz it was free at some point they gave it away on whatever it was. I think it was like a pandemic special on on PlayStation. So they gave it away, I took it, I played it, finished it, and I could say it's worth doing that cuz it's like a above average game I would say. Maybe you're going to think it's amazing, maybe you're going to think it's bad. So a yeah. Precise shot but it works and it exists. I also draw those weaknesses of the enemy to a very similar thing from say Lost Planet, shoot the big glowy parts for massive damage. Lost it Planet. Feel like you're playing other games that have kind of been taped together when it comes to the combat. Oh yeah, and the, the physics, I didn't like the combat. physics as well when it comes to shooting people. When it comes to shooting the monsters, the enemies, the you know, the animals, it was good. It's nothing to write home about. I, I really enjoyed light that. Light attacks and heavy attacks, for the most part, the light attacks are almost worthless. You need to hit something with a heavy attack. Yeah, you just need to spam it. Behind with stealth, you just need to spam. A few more hits. However, stealth was no, terrible in this. I hated the stealth. The game, a la Dark Souls or, or Neo or any other games recently. Oh, by the way, he, yesterday, now that the uh, Hood Hustler brought up the chat, um, yesterday he had like six people in his chat or something, which was very fucking funny. He had like 200 people watching. So it's very easy to try to be hitting a certain enemy uh, and if there's others around, you're going to start whiffing and missing and next thing you know you get shot from behind and killed. It's kind of frustrating and the melee combat is certainly nothing to write home about. Now, outside of the combat, there's also some ex exploration a la in Dark game. Souls. Oh, he said Dark Souls? It's kind of frustrating in the Neo or any other games. Oh, uh, yeah, of course, fucking heavy attack or What is how can you even compare it with Dark Souls? Hits. However, there's no formal targeting system in the game a la Dark Souls or Allah. Neo or any other games recently. So it's very easy to try to be hitting a certain enemy and if there's others around, you're going to Oh, and he got capped. This he was you know, too stupid. From behind and killed. It's All right. frustrating and the melee combat is certainly nothing to write home about. Now, this is terrible I'll... gameplay. Why would, why would you want to show this gameplay? But of course, compares it to fucking Dark Souls because you can't you can't lock in, so you can compare it to Dark Souls. Unlike Dark Souls, in this game you can't lock in. Are you serious? Everything is Dark Souls for this guy. Melee combat is certainly not a la Dark Souls. Now, because he wants to sound smart, so let's just name drop Dark Souls. Side of the combat. 
There's yeah, this game is hard. It's like Dark Souls. And investigation game you can see your character. Drawing a parallel to Witcher 3. Well, and again, with Witcher 3, because you can explore the world. All of a sudden, you're going to be using this device that you find in a cave. It basically reveals hidden paths for you. And you're Witcher 3. And going through the jungle, following these around to find enemies, to find, you know, what happened in a certain situation. Again, very similar to the Witcher sense from Witcher 3. So it really does feel like this game took these elements from other successful games of the past five to ten years and said let's just do it like this and taped it all together now innately there's nothing wrong with that especially if you're a huge fan of any of the games that i just mentioned you're probably going to like seeing a game that takes the best elements and puts them together in a refined way but for me i was looking for a little bit more with horizon especially hearing all these glowing reviews that everyone oh, and of course he got hyped up and expected way too much about this game. He didn't know what to expect. He just heard a bunch of like, like people. Yeah. It's gonna blow me away, and I'm sad to say, honestly. Hey, big up Sparma. Really nothing did. Yeah. For being good. awake. Yeah, the gameplay worked. Wake up, dude. Go have a coffee. The gameplay element of Horizon Zero Dawn that I said, man, this is fun and unique and different, and it's something I've never done in another game before. Let me give you some perspective. A few years ago, Shadows of Mordor was released. It was a similar style of game. Let me give you some fucking perspective. This is a, a review of Horizon Zero Dawn. It's not a re review of a different game. It's not a review of Dark Souls or Elden Ring or anything. To Horizon Zero Dawn. Anything. Stop oh, fucking anything. name dropping other shit. Just base because he's this bad at giving you an actual productive, good review on something that he has to bring up other stuff and just compare it casually. The thing about it was the nemesis and, system by which no. the game would generate these kind of uh, procedurally generated enemies that would become your nemeses. If you killed them, they would come back. Yeah, this was summer, great. And you would go back and forth fighting these guys over the course of the game. Completely unique. Never done in another game before. Mad Max, which came out just a couple of years ago. Same kind of formula. Open world roaming. What form? Oh my, my god. Shooter. But the unique thing about that is that you could craft vehicles. And you could have races. And you could do all that kind of unique oh. stuff with the game. Again. Are there even races in that game? I'm pretty sure there are. Stuff from other game franchises, but putting a unique spin on it. Horizon unique. really doesn't do that. It just takes the things from other franchises and puts them together. And sadly for me, I did feel that the weakest part of the like game... Like what? Okay. If you want to go this route and be a fucking asshole and call out games for not being original, you could do it the other way as well. You can fucking say, well, Mad Max is an original because it's it's the Batman Arkham gameplay. It's It has the combat system of Batman Arkham. So that's not original. Even though he says it is because you can have races with fucking cars. It's ridiculous. Was the gameplay experience simply because... I and, and then in this game, you have all the traps that, that make your game more open and more, the combat situations more open. You have variety of enemies that you fight in different ways that are vul vulnerable to different types of stuff. It is its own spin on the, the normal thing. It's not like reinventing the wheel or something, but it doesn't always have to. I didn't feel like I was doing anything unique or different. I was just kind of going through motions of other games that I've played. Now, you got to keep in mind something. Okay, well, that's the same thing with uh, with Shadow of Mordor. It was the same thing. Outside of having the Nemesis system, it was a generic third-person open-world uh, exploration, crafting, looting, and shooting type of scenario. It was the same thing. It was the same thing. Full-time gamer, and I've been doing this for eight years. So, I've and of course, we got a flex in a in a review. This is a DSP thing. This is a landmark in DSP content. Is when he flexes views or legacy in an edited video. This is how he starts his most popular video ever. Uh, the Homefront review, he starts it by saying, dude, I've been around for like 15 years and might make 16,000 videos. And then you look at his channel and he has 20k subs. And you start thinking, man, this, this guy's probably fucking terrible. That's why he's just doing this for like so long and still no result probably played more games than most people and i guarantee you that the vast majority of people flexing about the the games he's played didn't play both tomb raider reboots probably didn't play mad max didn't play shadows of mordor you know what i mean it's a very unique situation of a person who's played every one of those games but those games are very much different they're all very much different tomb raider is different to this tomb raider doesn't have fucking dinosaurs mechanical monsters and shit to make this compare tomb raider doesn't have fucking traps like this Harrison so if you yeah the comments are on 
Yeah, and I think people are calling him out, but I'm not gonna go and, and read through the whole thing. Games and you're just experiencing this bow and arrow combat for the first time. But it's the bow and arrow combat because he's gonna take it's it's just fucking terrible logic, man. It's terrible fucking logic. It's gonna take one element of the game and compare the the two games completely. Like this is supposed to be a direct comparison of Tomb Raider because you can shoot with a bow. And it should be a comparison to Mad Max, because it's an open world game. Such general comparisons, which actually prevents him from having productive in-depth reviews about what this is actually about. But no, let's just compare the, the separate elements of the game. But does the bow in this game feel good? Does it feel better than, than Tomb Raider? Or Tomb Raider is, is better, more sophisticated, more fun? How is the physics? Are the physics nice to use, entertaining to use? Are they enjoyable? Do you want to keep doing it more? But no, it has the same. It's the same because you can shoot a bow. You may be like, wow, I'm so blown away. But for me, it was kind of less. This guy wants to be blown away by everything. By everything. And it's put out... 60,000 plus videos that never blew anybody away. That's kind of the thing. Because I can't think of one single video that DSP was participating in developing and creating that would blow anybody away. Anybody. Unless it's the first video you've ever seen. You're an actual time traveler and you just came out of the machine and you're like, here, look at a fucking DSP video. And that's going to blow you away because you've never seen a video before. Outside of that, he's never made anything that would blow you away. Their own never. Because it just didn't feel unique enough. Now, one thing that does excel in Horizon Zero Dawn is the plot line, and I am very happy to tell you that. Yeah, plot was fun. The game. Plot was this fun. This is one of the select few video games that I have played in the past few years that first of all has an outstanding intelligent storyline that keeps you guessing at what's going um, on. The, the dialogue though was terrible and for me the dialogue is half the story because I don't care about the plot points if the dialogue is going to be bad and the dialogue I hated in this. It's just the generic. It might as well have been the Mass Effect Andromeda dialogue. It's just those generic characterless personalityless dialogue. Times. Gee, why is, we, why is the world like it is? Why are all these robots roaming around and attacking humans? And what's going on with this character and that character? And why are these tribes at war? It's pretty cool playing the character of Aloy. Who Aloy. 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 This is the first time I've ever heard somebody say this. Aloy. It's Aloy. Serious origins. You're not sure where she Aloy. Came Yet the tribe treats her as. So he didn't even say it as alloy, as the the you know the alloy metal alloy. But no, it's Aloy instead. Who would even say it like that? Oh, Cash. He's thrown out into the open. Ah, uh, fail. You run into other tribes at war, and you're kind of torn between this world of trying to find out what happened in the post-apocalypse. Why did humanity end the way it did? How did it get rebooted? And he's showing a spoiler, by the way. If you've played the first hour of the game, this is a spoiler for you. Paired with all because you don't know this guy's bad. Well, now you do. Situations where the tribes aren't getting along, and they're at war, and you're kind of between all of this as this kind of outcast, and it's really interesting plot i'm not gonna get the outcast like phil but i will tell you this out of all the games i've played in the past few years not only is this plot incredibly satisfying but there's no plot holes at the end of the game every single question is answered and or will be answered supposedly in a sequel which is hinted at near the end of the game so definitely i say wow i was blown away i was so happy when i finally finished the game and i said wow a game that i don't have to have this inkling in the back of my head that man they didn't give me all of it maybe they saved something for a dlc or maybe they just didn't want to give everything there is a dlc and leave an air of mission yeah frozen wilds well at this point he didn't know it but yeah when i pay full price for a game i want a coherent story that has a start middle and end and not a, a ambiguous segment to it that makes absolutely no sense for the sake of the fact that oh we want the gamers to figure that out for themselves bullshit this game what? doesn't do that it does an amazing job with the plot line I was blown away. The plot by far for me was the best part of Horizon Zero Dawn, and that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if there are elements left for a sequel, then they didn't fucking answer everything. So ultimately for me, Horizon Ultimately, Zero let's Dawn see the ultimate kind of review. Bag. It's a mixed bag. What is going to get a, a 7.8? A mixed bag. Story a mixed bag is like a 5. Really interesting that gets you hooked in thinking and answers all your questions without leaving horrible plot holes and really just does a great job at telling an awesome narrative. And that's a rare thing in this day and age, at least in my opinion. Okay. Pair that in with some 
some side content that's quite meaningful and good with unique characters and plot lines you would have missed out on if you didn't do it also paired with side content that's absolutely there just for padding sake and doesn't absolutely need to be in the game at all and is just a time waste oh yeah the the chewing his fingers is is really really interesting because it's this thing that it's very bizarre and it's you know it's it's kind of easy to notice when there's a person of any other ethnicity but him on the screen, actually, I think it's just with, with black people, with African-American people, when they're on the screen, he bites his fingers. It's been noticed. And there's a whole thread about it on Kiwi Farms. For real, he does this all the time. I don't know why. I don't know why. Of course, Paris It's just a, a really funny thing. Play that's kind of been here, done that, especially if you've played any of the big major titles that I mentioned in this review already, and it doesn't really do anything unique. And that's unique. Kind of why I'm... Isn't it unique to have animals that are mechanical and massive, and then you fight them with an arsenal of weapons that is kind of open-ended, you know? Kind of tough time I think that's kind of unique. Gotta give him credit. It's it's a thing. Because you could have just done basically anything else instead. It could have just done it so you spam the anim the enemy until it dies. Uh, big ups Paul J. Brazel for the, the super chat. Shout out to my buddy Grug. Shout out to your buddy Grug. And uh, anyone notice the absence of snorts in this? Yeah, he didn't snort. Because that's the thing with him. When he wants to, he, he doesn't snort. He w will not. And maybe it gives him some discomfort or I don't know, maybe he gets too much phlegm in the back of his throat or whatever. But he doesn't snort when he wants to. It's just on stream he really doesn't want to. He'll let himself go so much. This game, how do you give a score to a game that you really liked? It's ridiculous. Of, but didn't necessarily enjoy other aspects. Uh, you give it a Hopefully seven. It is tough because the game is definitely functional. And in particular, if you're a person who did not play the Tomb Raider reboots, did not play Far Cry Primal, had, didn't play Witcher 3, you may really love this game. And I hate to say it, I think the people who reviewed this game incredibly highly were probably people in that boat and didn't realize that this game lifted a lot of its best gameplay elements. But what if they like it? What if they really Really enjoyed it and they're not sticklers for originality because not every game is going to be original that's that's just how it is and a lot of games are going to be inspired by each other and that's going to be the situation but that doesn't mean they can't be good or fun enjoyable or meaningful which are all subjective terms straight from those franchises so yeah well, for me, Shout out to subjectivity. I can see this, and I'm sorry. I just, just say it's your opinion, dude. Ass. Everything's okay. Say, oh, 10 out of 10 game of the year, when in reality, I know that it didn't really do anything. He, he's got this, this weird fetish to shit on people that say everything is 10 out of 10, or something is 10 out of 10. So he got this weird fetish where he has to shit on them. No, it's not a fucking 10 out of 10. Uh, has DSP ever said some game is a 10 out of 10? What, a Street Fighter 2 Turbo? Probably. A 10 out of 10. I don't think there's 10 out of 10s, but it's just like a a 10 out of 10 is just a marketing scheme. It's just that's all that it is. Fucking 10 out of 10. So ultimately, with all facts, don't believe numbers. Go watch a review that's like six hours long. That spoils everything. Zero dawn and 8.25. What? This is a mixed bag. 8.25. This means it's a great game. An eight out of 10. He said it was a mixed bag, I didn't like a lot of elements, but I like the story, but a lot of the elements are not original. 8.25. Fucking thanks. Out of 10. Uh, good afternoon, Suds. It it's afternoon here as well. Those gameplay elements that it lifted, I probably would have given it a 9 or higher, and it would have been a major game of the year contender. Wait, what? Did, did Angry Joe for real give The Witcher 3 a, a 10? Oh, I, I thought he... Yeah, I misread your comment. I, I thought he gave it a 3 out of 10. And then I was like, what? Yeah. Damned good game. And again, if you didn't play any of the Proceeded to get ass blasted by him on his own forums. You're looking for a great Wait, DSP shit on, on Angry Joe for giving The Witcher 3 a 10? I don't know. It's bizarre, but no, Witcher 3 in the state when it came out, it was glitchy as fuck. That's not a 10. You can't give a 10 for this. Exclusive. This is definitely no. Oh, yeah, the. the, the now, why is this rating so detailed? I'm gonna tell you why. Because DSP is a fucking snowflake. Because an 8.25 out of 10 is the same as an 8 out of 10. It's not even an 8.5. It's an 8.25. It's a bullshit metric that is supposed to just make him look more interesting. As in like, wow, this guy, he went really in-depth if he's gonna give it this much of a detailed score. 10. 
if it had done something unique and different, if it had actually improved upon those gameplay elements that it lifted, I probably would have given it. A My favorite reviews, though, are the ones that just say if they would recommend it or not. No, no fucking numbers. I hate numbers. Because if I sat through and listened through the whole review, then I wouldn't give a shit about the number in the end because it would make sense. But with this guy, you can sit through 14 minutes of him calling this game unoriginal and a game that you've played before and give it an 8.25. And then I, a bunch of questions go up. Nine or higher, and it would have been a major game of the year contender. As is, it's still a pretty damned good game. And again, if you didn't play any of the major titles I mentioned in this review, and you only own a PS4, and you're looking for a great console exclusive, this is definitely nothing to skip. It's a must play for someone who is looking for a really interesting experience that's going to have a ton of content. But if you are like me, don't expect anything that's going to blow you away because you're really not going to find it, at least in the gameplay, but you will find it in the story and graphics of Horizon. Well, that is it for my review. And thanks for watching. And then we have an entire paragraph that is just shilling. Patreon, Loot Crate, Raw Playthrough, Teespring, video description. See you next time. And this is a great review. Uh, so for this, we had an 8.5 two five out of uh ten so it was a very mixed bag now let's go to his other popular shit because this is kind of the thing we are doing today now doom 2016 is a hell of a reboot but this is gonna get like a 10 out of 10 so i don't care about this the, does he give it a 10 out of 10 probably gonna give it an, a 9.37 oh it's a 9 out of 10 what did he hate about it Let's see just his summary. There's so much content just between the campaign and the multiplayer that unless you really have sucked everything dry, you're probably not going to be too interested in this unless you're one of those people that absolutely loves creating their own levels. Then I say take a stab Oh, it is just like the level creator nice and stuff there. like that. I don't know what it is. A little bit more functional or interesting. But for now, I kind of say, meh, something that I'll ignore, but other people might be interested in. Yeah, he, he's not really used to saying those things anymore, at least. He never says, uh, hey, this, I don't care about this, but you might care about this. And so ultimately weighing everything. Oh, the Death Stranding review? Holy shit, if I can find this, I'm going to rage so much because I'm pretty sure that I've watched this before. And I'm also not really sure that it's on this channel. There's a review of Neo, which I'm a little bit curious to see. There's the Last Guardian review, which we already know from yesterday what he said. The Agents of Mayhem, more like Agents of Boredom. This got 12,000. This is so bad. Mankind Divided, we get a... What else do we get? Metroid Prime. And then we get some complaining. Game of the Year 2016, the conclusion. Let's take a look at this first, and then we'll see the Neo review. All right. Uh Oh yeah, the DSP video from yesterday about demanding video games are released to his schedule. Uh, I talked about this live because I watched the podcast live yesterday. The conclusion to my game the of the conclusion. year down for 2016. If you didn't see the you again take up what do you get? Oh, okay. That's great. Shout out to this game. I liked it a lot. It had some weird microtransaction shit in it, but I enjoyed it. Then what do we have? Oh, this is Watch Dogs 2. I'm going to hate this one. I hate that game. You're absolutely going to love this one. Absolutely hate that. For me, it was just too much playing it safe. Although I really did enjoy it. It's an honorable mention. He wants a sequel to take more risks. My top three games of the year, starting with... Yeah, no, no. Terrible, 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 terrible. Because I've actually studied and know hackers. Actual ethical hackers. You know? They're nothing like what they are in this game. Nothing like it. What they have in this game, the characters that are in this game in Watch Dogs 2, is a caricature of a hacker. Of what a, a shitty writer thinks a hacker is. And how they operate and how they talk. The characters are terrible. There's this weird morality thing where you're supposed to be owning the, the corporation that invade your privacy. But at the same time, you're invading people's privacy as well. But it's good because you're the good guy. And you also um, can murder people, and that's okay. Some people are going to have a lot of problem with this because it seemed like people just have issue with the Watch Dogs franchise. Because the, the fir first one, I actually kind of liked the first one a little bit more. It was kind of, uh, I guess, if you played like a John Wick, 
and just run around and shoot stuff and slow-mo and and stuff like that it's it's okay it's still nothing like what they showed at e3 but it's all right if you can pick it up for like five bucks play through it once and that's it First but Watch Dogs 2 i hate it i hate it absolutely hate it cars drive like ass they slide like they're ice skating terrible cars handling uh the gunplay was bad the world was good because it's ubisoft and their worlds are usually interesting and well fleshed out overwhelming according to expectations and hype that have been built up for it but it and this like game is just terrible the the puzzles were awful that was given to the original game and uh, watch dogs 2 pretty much addressed all of it and watch dogs legion is probably worse it's actually probably worse because the story is completely, please ignore it. If you play those games, completely fucking ignore the story that it exists. Because it's just so fucking bad. Instead of having one boring, silent protagonist or brooding, boring main character, you have a team of interesting hipsters. Kids who are out to change. I don't know what, what, what was up with his voice around this time in 20, what what is this, 2016, late 2016 or early 2017. It sounds like he either just woke up or he was legitimately like, I don't know, drunk or something. It, it like he's sick. The world they all have unique and quirky personalities. They're no. very different people. No. They all have their own interests no. backstories. No, and no, no. Machines. No, they're, they're not. They're not interesting people. They're not even people. They're not convincing to be people. They're not convincing enough and fleshed out enough to be people. They're a caricature of what somebody thinks a hacker is like to be a very much more interesting game than the first you can even go and watch mr robot go watch mr robot you're gonna see what hacking is about it's not this this is bullshit first one Improved this is magic that is just a lot more fun than it used to it's be it's not fun more 3d-esque puzzles it's not fun not only this kind of 2d interface but 3d layouts on buildings and walls and things you've got drones that you can either fly or use to jump over obstacles and in a lot of ways i mean this sucks about the original like, this sucks because you do it two or three times and then you're completely tired of doing it this is the issue for me with this it's always the same the original game was that it was too much it's always the same run and gun third person shooter in this game you don't even have to ever use guns you could constantly be using the abilities of hacking and the drones to basically do all this stuff yeah it's boring you. if you want it to be boring you can do that different from the original but for me the main difference and the reason why I love this game so much was the wide variety of missions, the insane amount of content. I mean, my playthrough lasted some two or plus weeks of playing this game on and off because it just okay. has so much side content and stuff hidden in it. Is There's it meaningful? So to do. Every little snippet of things that you find in the city, you want to keep going on. The, the locations, the graphics, everything about this game is a major the graphics from the original. I mean, it's a shame it, it is. So many people panned this game and said, we're but, not play No, it. for me, I, I can't play it. I, I legit can't play it. This, the story and the characters are so bad and the, the handling of the cars is so bad. I can't even enjoy the city of how bad the, the cars handle. They're just like the generic Ubisoft sliding on butter kind of handling. If you've played uh, probably the crew, if you've played the crew, you would know what I mean. It's just like a complete lack of traction. It's just you're floating on a, I don't know, on like a hoverboard. The original didn't live up to what we were expecting. In a lot of ways, I feel that this is the most overlooked game of 2016 because it is so long, has so much content, and it's just so entertaining to me. If you skipped Watch Dogs 2... Oh yeah, the Hackers now, movie. The Hackers movie. It's, it's terrible. That's like a... It's a meme movie. Everybody knows at this point it's a meme. Missing out on... Because it was about hackers, but it was way back in the day, so they had actually no idea how hackers work, so they just made up a bunch of shit. An experience that is so improved over the original, a game developer... Uh, no, he wasn't recording from a TV at this point. Definitely... This was direct yeah. capture. And now on to my second best game... I would get Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Are you gonna compare it to Dark Souls 2? I mean, you should. Of the, Souls the penultimate climax. What the fuck does this mean? This game was the penultimate climax of the Souls franchise. Penultimate means, by the way, the second. Um, let's pull it up here. Penultimate. What does it mean? It means last but one in a series of things. So if, if Dark Souls 3 was the last one before Dark Souls 4, and then Dark Souls comes out, Dark Souls 4 comes out, then Dark Souls 3 is the penultimate game. It's not the ultimate game. But he thinks it's it's the ultimate game because it, it it's an elaborate word. 
franchise and the final game in the Dark Souls uh, series. It's the final game. That, that's what. pretty much right. Having the that's what makes variety it of weapons ultimate. and gameplay styles yet, having amazingly detailed graphics, having a wide variety of locations, hidden content, an awesome soundtrack, pretty much everything you would want from a Souls game is exactly what you got in Dark Souls 3. In fact, the only real major complaints I've heard about this game is that the most hardcore players think that it might have been a little bit too easy compared to the other games in the franchise, but you know what? That's to be expected when you're the third iteration. You're trying to be appealing to a wider audience and i think that in a lot of ways dark souls 3 does have a few kind of easier crutches for people to jump into the series for the first time especially if hey, the graphics were great played from, from shout out to the Wonder graphics Wars. This game kind of eases you in at the beginning, and then, of course, it really pounds the hell out of you with cheap instant deaths and challenging situations, just like you've always come to know and love from the Dark Souls series. For me, the only major criticism I had is that I played this game on the Xbox One, and sadly, in certain situations, there were ridiculous frame drops causing... This is why, by the way, the era where the interactive streaming began. So all this footage, except some of it, uh has dsp's face cam on it so this is when it started me to completely lose control having you know nowadays he even has two face cams he has two face cams and two leaderboards to the extent where people get confused about the amount of money he's got that day this is how fucking wild this guy is let me just show you dsp gaming um best games 2021 let's say he did this right uh here it is here it is and he got both of them, or or at least two leaderboards at the same time at some points. Yeah, here. Here you got it. You got two leaderboards. One of them has $66 on it. The other one has $2 on it. And PayPigs were confused about which one was the, the, the actual one. And you got, uh, here you have one face cam. And at some point, I think he had two. Um, yeah, I guess not. But yeah, he had two leaderboards. Very fucking nice. They legit got confused. And if you think even further about what kind of things his pay pigs get confused about, let me show you. We go to uh, Dick Stroking Phil Vlogs, right? And I've said this previously. One of his pay pigs got confused by this video. Yes, this video. It wasn't this. Um, he was having this whole segment when somebody called him out and said, Phil, why did you rage quit Legends Arceus? I saw a clip of you doing it. And then it turned out that that guy actually watched this video. He watched this fucking video by dick stroking Phil vlogs. And then he went to DSP and he was like, Phil, you made this video about canceling Legends Arceus. Why did you do that? All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Wrap for Sunday, the 6th of February. This is how this video sounds like. And effectively the end of my Pokemon Legends Arceus stream. <laughs> this, with this cutting, dude got legit confused, and DSP got pissed. I want to say thank you to everyone who chill, supported, liked the content, you know, liking of the streams and the videos, leave comments on the videos. All of that helped tremendously this week, and that's going to continue to happen. You know, every new release... You'll see new people coming to the channel and they start trying to derail the stream. Yeah, you know, what the predators. fuck? They sit around watching in the wings like a- They're predators. The they, they pounce on, which is excellent. I'm very happy about this, okay? So now, let's talk about today. Today was Skyrim Anniversary Edition on the first stream. It was thrilling. Wow, could you be any stupider? Seriously, like everything went well today. Pretty crazy. Support was outstanding, off the charts. We far exceeded all of our goals for today. Um, in addition, we actually hit a new member's record, 361 members, most I've ever had on DSP Gaming. Then, sadly, a few memberships expired by the night, but still, <clears throat> now, that was the daytime stream, okay? Hey, good morning, simple Aaron. Sad to say well, this was the, the derailment segment, basically. This is something that a pay pig got confused about, enough to complain to DSP, and DSP was pissed. Dropped inputs, delayed inputs, and delayed there were inputs, dropped in inputs that were so much more difficult than they needed to be, only because of the frame drops. Now I've actually heard that on some other probably, versions of the game, on other, you know, platforms, that was a it thing. didn't have that issue. So for me to hold that against Dark Souls Three would be unfair. This game was robust, was it was robust. So much Dark Souls Three is robust, confirmed. 
much content, took me weeks to beat. I absolutely loved taking my time with it and picking apart every optional boss and every location and looking for every little item, doing all the secret areas and everything. So much awesomeness. It really was the a way lot of awesomeness. This trilogy. I mean, it is, yeah. I know it's a cool Dark game. Souls 3, any other year, probably would have been my game of the year pick. But there was one other game that did it slightly better, but Dark Souls 3 was still damned amazing. Oh, you can see which and one this now, game is. Game of course. Others, in my opinion, it's, it's a Phil type game. It's the DSP type game. The walking around and climbing on stuff and looking at cutscenes kind of game. 16, Uncharted 4. That's right. The last hurrah for Nathan Drake and his the last hurrah. misfits, bandits, and treasure hunting adventurers. Uncharted 4 did everything right. Drastic did nothing wrong. Graphics from all the games previously in the franchise, perfectly balancing the third person shooter, platforming, and sneaking gameplay with awesome large scale set pieces, action sequences, and basically you never felt bored playing Uncharted 4. Puzzles and exploration and different locations, varieties of graphics, the interaction of characters, new characters being introduced, the story of Uncharted 4, everything just felt like an awesome interactive Indiana Jones slash Tomb Raider style event. And that's exactly what you come to expect from this franchise. It was an interactive awesome event. Execution by <laughs> Naughty Dog. Oh yeah, by the way, I didn't even mention that Uncharted 4 had one of the best multiplayer modes of any game this year with its amazing third person shooter gameplay featuring grappling hook swinging and all kinds of cooperative fun having these assists and things now that you can summon this it was is such bad gameplay though beta of this last year such bad gameplay he was he's talking about how exciting the multiplayer is and then this is the gameplay he likes to show and in, in the brief time that he has to show some gameplay. I was playing Star Wars uh, Battlefront, and I said, wow, the multiplayer of Uncharted 4 is like infinitely better than the game whose only focus is multiplayer. Isn't that sad? Wow, and he Uncharted killed 4, some guy. I absolutely. Think that was the great gameplay. The multiplayer of Uncharted 4 actually was one of the best multiplayer experiences of 2016. I've literally so never played it. The penultimate Why would I care about this chapter ever in the Uncharted franchise along the penultimate a robust and fun and robust that didn't even need to be there. All these fucking buzzwords, the all these buzzwords to cover up the fact that he doesn't really have a lot to talk about. And this is his 2016. And in the end, what you get is a wall of text of shilling. And then please stay tuned for other stuff. See you next time. And of course, the, the description to this, it's it's asking for money on various different platforms on all the platforms that he could basically now let's go take a look at neo because i don't know anything about that game i haven't played it beat it or anything so i want to see what he thinks about it uh this is a disliked video it has 464 likes to 479 dislikes so it should be good on everyone phil here and welcome to ko gaming just recently after two and a half weeks and over 40 hours of gameplay I managed to complete my playthrough of Neo, the hack and slash gruelingly difficult action adventure RPG hybrid game from Team Ninja that has a lot of similarities to games from From Software as of late, including both the Dark Souls and Bloodborne franchises. There's a lot to say about this game, tons of similarities to the From Software dynasty, but also a lot of things that set it apart from that specific line of games and actually make it kind of its own special IP and not just kind of a wannabe clone similar to say Lords of the Fallen from a few years back. I really enjoyed Neo, although I do feel that there were some things that could have been improved. Overall, this is probably one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had. Of Keep course, we gotta mind, compare I everything to Dark Souls. Souls. I mean, I understand why, but judge it on, on its own merits. Why do you have to compare it to something else that somebody fucking else made? It's not even that studio that made it. Recently, and therefore, I'm used to the gruelingly difficult kind of gameplay that you get with this style of game. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it certainly does a lot of things right, which I'd like to outline in this review. So let's get started. First off, let's talk about the direct similarities between Neo and the Dark Souls slash Bloodborne franchises, so that if you are aware of those previous franchises and you're interested in jumping uh, big up Spawn J. Brazel for a super chat, why uh, so says uh, Phil Rage quit the DLC to Neo. 
I should probably pull this up after this review. We're comparing the two. I should see First if it's off, any good really rage. Difficult. Every single enemy in Neo can kill you with just Shout a couple out to your hits. Buddy, even near the end of the game when you have higher level armor, you're just going to be taking a ton of damage and one wrong step, especially if you're not paying attention or if you fall for a beginner's trap, instant death and or booby trap could lead you to death and having to start back at a checkpoint. So definitely one of the major reasons why this game is similar to the From Software franchises is because of the difficulty level. I think I found the it. Epic style boss fights. Epic yes, style boss fights? Why not just epic boss fights? Just say this. You get epic boss fights. Why epic style boss fights? Epic isn't a style. It's not a stylistic choice. Epic. Incredibly similar to those in Bloodborne and Dark Souls. Holy Street. shit, fuck, the man. Same style energy bar. The same style. The same style energy bar. Also, you're going to be collecting Amrita. Everything is a style. Level up at shrines. The shrines serve as your checkpoints, similar to how souls and or the blood of the Dark Souls and Blood the Warfare blood the experience points you use to level up either at a bonfire or a lantern or whatever you want to call it. You see the direct comparison here. It's incredibly similar in that regard. You can tell that the designers of Neo were fans of those franchises and were definitely trying to make a game inspired by that. The combat can be actually played incredibly similar to that franchise as well. Depending on what weapon in class you actually pick in the game, you could either be slower and more lumbering with weapons such as spears, or you could be more fast with uh, weapons like katanas or dual swords or even whipping chains. There's a lot of weapons dual swords. in the game. It's like dual like core processors. Say in Dark Souls, when you could either do sword or shield, or you could go for a more quick or more agile kind of a loadout, or even in Bloodborne, where you really couldn't block, and it was more about dodging around. A lot of the, the different builds you can do in Neo are very similar to that style of gameplay, where you'll probably never want to block anything and instead use your really fast capabilities and light armor to dodge around the enemies so there's a ton of similarities directly between oh yeah the thing with the stances in in these games say, it's uh kind of like confusing to me i guess but there are actually a I'm not ton used to them. of differences in but Neo i gotta say out of out of all the the souls like games i like sekiro the most because there is nothing that feels as good as when you parry a, a strike perfectly and then, and then you just flip on attack mode and that's just one of the best fucking gaming things i've i've had happen to me almost in a lot of ways when you parry somebody in like just a delicious fucking way you parry him and then you clap his cheeks so like vast improvements to the games from the from software development team like they played those games and said well how could we take that and make it better and let's talk a little bit about those differences. Okay, now we're going to compare the games. The whole cultural design of Neo is based around Japanese culture. There's ninjas, shoguns, samurai, and yokai, Japanese-style mystical demons coming from Japanese style. There's a lot of stuff in this game that's definitely into that culture. Unlike Dark Souls and Bloodborne, which are a more gothic kind of appeal or medieval kind of appeal, this one is definitely more Japanese-centric. The medieval style? The game, yes, has a lot of similarities Japanese to style. software games, but <laughs> because of the addition what? of high, low, Bro. and stances, definitely mixes it up in a lot of ways. So instead of just having one kind of attack pattern per what weapon you're using, you actually have three separate stances that you can change between on the fly. This allows and you to have stronger, more damaging, and more stamina-reducing attacks that are a little bit slower, mid-range attacks that are a little bit uh, quicker, The shoguns. The gun show shoguns. <laughs> A lot faster, but usually don't deal a lot of damage, but maybe good for dodging and the like. So having three completely different kinds of Hey, this is a good idea. This is a cool, cool thing. The game adds a ton of variety to it that is not necessarily capable in Dark Souls. Although one thing I should say, there are no shields in Neo. However, certain weapons like the spear can be used in the end game, and especially if you're wearing heavy armor sets, because yes, there is equipment weight and the like, just like the From Software franchise. With a heavy armor set, you can tank it out and block, while if you don't have heavy armor, you're going to take a ton of damage per hit, so you're going to want to be... All right, at least his gameplay about this is not absolutely game, terrible. So he puts in things that are kind of relevant there. gameplay from the actual you know dark souls and the light but it's cool that you have the different stances and that but it's like actually be that's that's the thing with his shit i don't i don't know even when it's kind of okay it's still way below average because then i remember there's people that used to do this kind of videos like pro probably a couple of years before he even started and they're infinitely better flowing however it should be noted 
that the stances really in all honesty are completely optional because in my experience oh yeah okay playing Neo, so he played only mid really stance all the stances i really preferred using mid stance because he's mid while for an exception i mean he's not even mid working, i would switch it out but for the most part i was able to beat this entire game only using mid stance with a spear which says something about the game yeah it has complexity but the complexity isn't necessarily necessary in order to succeed in addition there's both what's called ninjutsu and on Neo magic ninjutsu is using different kinds of ninja tools in order to help with combat including throwing little kunai daggers and projectiles throwing caltrops on the ground to slow down enemies in all honesty i almost never used these however the these? On Neo magic you seem to be a lot better for example there's things that could buff your defense there's uh, a magic spell uh, j ruiz for the two-month membership renewal games you that is so cool dude big ups appearance here in neo but also one of the best spells in the game is the sloth spell i wasn't even aware aware of it until near the end of my run in the game hey good morning buddy what's up man spell on an enemy it's we're watching phil's ko gaming channel that is super exciting and basically get them wide open wait you got a whale on them in the game by casting is it like a mobile game it slows them down a certain mobile game allowing you to wail on them oh you wail on them basically get i need to cut this off as a as a sound bite get them wide open phil is playing mobile games he wails on them so that you can destroy them it's a really effective way to kill an enemy especially if you're having a tough time with a certain boss use the slaw spell slow the big ups jay reese for the dollar side. super chat find that, uh, find with no side. message should have said a message dude yeah magic Ninjutsu, three different stances, makes it a hell of a lot more complex than anything from software has put out combat-wise so far. Another gameplay mechanic. He didn't know that he could change the stances. That's some cool lore. <laughs> he didn't know that he could change them. The Maybe he just didn't care enough. System, which in effect is your stamina bar in this game. As you attack in Neo, you're going to have this bar that's going to deplete. Once it's completely depleted, your character will be frozen in place and completely vulnerable for a few seconds. So your goal is to attack and dash around, but never fully deplete your stamina bar so that you can actually continue to fight effectively and not get sucked. Okay. Is it better than Dark Souls though? That's that's your your clickbait title. And you have only two question marks. You should always either have three or one. Why would you have two question marks? Still, now there is There's a no reason for that. Or you should have an exclamation and a question mark. And by which you can recharge your key by pressing a bumper button after a few hits. If your key is reduced, you're going to see that it's going to slowly recharge. And if you tap the button with with timing, it'll actually auto, uh, automatically recharge a certain portion of that key meter for you. So not only are you constantly attacking and dodging, but you're also micromanaging this key meter, making the combat of Neo way more complex, in my opinion, than that that's been in games like Dark Souls or anything before. And that's a really cool thing. Now, another new mechanic is this yokai fog or mist i believe they call it the yokai realm where when you're fighting certain demons in this All game right. they're gonna have this cloud of darkness around them and when you're inside of that your key is going to regenerate incredibly slowly and in some cases it won't regenerate at but why do you have to, so ex to explain either. everything because uh, this is like a 25 minute review what what else is there to do because at this point, he explained basically everything. This should be the end of the review. Step outside of that ring of yokai realm. Or... It's like, come on, I haven't played the game and I still got all the info that I wanted to know. It's like a Dark Souls, but instead it's Japanese. And also you have different stances and you have the, the different stuff. Or if you do a perfectly timed button press when your key is regenerating, you can actually negate that completely and clear it up from the ground, allowing you to fight normally and not have to worry about people in the comments. regenerating. So again, another cool additional mechanic that wasn't in the Dark Souls franchise that is in Neo that's really fun and actually adds a lot of new... Oh, somebody called him out on using only the default stance. Bill, did you really get a handle on the multiple fighting stances in the game? I've only seen you use the default one. And uh, someone says he switched it up a few times, but 95% of the time he was in mid-spear. All right, sure. Uh, whatever. And yeah, they're calling, uh, they calling him out on his stances. 
Now, one major way Neo differs from the From Software franchise is the mission structure. While From Software right. strives to make their games interconnected worlds where you can walk from one end of the world to the other at any time, that's not the case with Neo. You're going to have several disjointed missions that are accessible via a world map structure. Now, there's different kinds of missions. There's main. And also here, though, you get an actual quest log, as time, as you could see that's here. Not the case with Neo, you're going to you get a, a quest log for real. She tells you what you get for your quest and what the plot is. And the Dark Souls stories, they don't tell you this. Which, by the way, I read from from here. I, I didn't, it's not my original take. Jointed missions, by the way, that are accessible via a world map structure. Now, there's different kinds of missions. There's main story missions, which put you in a certain setting, a certain stage, by which you're going to run around and go to shrines. You're going to be fighting your way through hordes of enemies and booby traps. You're going to be picking up loot along the way, which is also another major thing in this game. Loot dropping is a huge thing. You're going to be fighting big ass bosses. You're going to be opening up shortcuts and checkpoints, and then finally, you're going to be completing those stages. Ages. At the end of this, bro, stage, this is a shit review. Level up and do many other things. It's a shit review. The this, this, this structure is all over the place. I fucking hate it. This is like legit, like if you were telling an actual a friend of yours about a game in real life and you were just explaining to them the game for, for half an hour. That's what it is. But this is supposed to be a professional, great, structured review, and it's not. It's just a lot of rambling and over explaining. But then it returns you back to the world map. Now there's also sub stories, which are basically side missions that are completely optional and you don't need to do. So that's a definite difference from the From Software games where everything is kind of in there mostly for world exploration and or to beat the game. In this case, these are completely optional missions. In some cases, these missions are unique and you'll have a unique kind of boss fight or duel against a character from the game that if you win, you'll earn a, maybe a rare item or a crafting uh, component that you'll need to make something good for your character later on. Or maybe it'll give you a lot of leveling experience experience and the like or in some cases these missions aren't very unique and you're returning back to a map that maybe you've already seen from a story mission or maybe there is a map that's only for submissions that you'll return to several times yeah he does expect he does for real expect you to give him some good word of mouth out of all the people that you would give word of mouth to and recommend their channel ko gaming or dsp is probably the last person legitimately because there's people that do reviews that are more informative Better design, better edited, better sound, uh, better personality. Um, either they are shorter and have, you know, it's a streamlined video with all the fat trimmed out, or it's a long video that goes really in depth in the game. And it, it's either one of those. And he tries to do kind of multiple things because he knows that there's multiple kinds of people and he wants to rip off everybody, but yeah through kind of generic waves of enemies and every once in a while these will have a boss in them but for the most part the sub stories are kind of just there to be there and to give you an extra opportunity to maybe level up your character and make them more strong in my case i chose to do every single sub story the game had to offer because i really wanted to make sure i wasn't missing out on any kind of a unique duel or a unique fight and i have to say that they do significantly add to the game although some of them do feel like blatant padding and yeah, hey, big ups, Dominic. What's up? This is a early style stream of watching uh, KO gaming shit, and then maybe some other shit. I don't know. There is a third. For now, it's just this. No, no drama or begging. It's just uh, gameplay. Today is for gameplay. Because this is kind of the chillest stuff that he's ever done. Is those reviews? Because they're easy to kind of make fun of. Because they're not good. There wasn't a lot of effort, creativity, originality, or entertainment in it. So yeah, that's why basically style of mission in neo called twilight missions all these are are after you've beaten certain story missions it's the same exact mission only now there's more difficult enemies they do more damage to you and the bosses have maybe some tweaks to them so they have different attacks and patterns than the original time that you fought them the only reason to do these stages again is to get ex additional experience and loot and usually they could drop some unique crafting items that will allow you at a blacksmith to maybe create some of the best weapons and armor in the game but ultimately it's just like redoing a stage from start to finish again, maybe a little bit more difficult than the first time you did it. And yeah, it does feel like repetitive. Let me pop up the transcript real quick. Oh, there's no transcript the for this? Of the game. Oh, no. And never did I ever You're feel like done. I was underleveled or that I wasn't doing enough in order to progress in the game. So just by playing through the main story of the game, 
you may be dauntingly challenged and feel like maybe you're a little bit under level. If you do some or all of the sub stories of the game, you're going to get unique loot. You're going to have some pretty epic one on one fights that are pretty uh, interesting and definitely notable, but you're also going to have some missions that are kind of repetitive and grinding. If you do all the Twilight missions, it's pretty much all repetitive stuff. So there is a mix of content in there. Ultimately, you could probably get upwards of 60 hours of gameplay out of Neo. Yeah, that's not bad. Doing the main 60 story hours of chill. My playthrough ended up around 40 hours. Now, I agree with the you. loot system in Neo is I, a little different than the From Software games in that it's more like Diablo than anything else. Loot's going to drop during the course of the game by different color levels, you know, yellow, blue, pink, and the like. The, the transcripts are something that gets added automatically based on the, the automatic captions that are made. Oh, you, you see here, there's no captions. Maybe he disabled it or something, or maybe it was just like early YouTube. This one represents a I don't know. Rarity. Rarity. But the, the transcript oftentimes helps me figure out the pacing of his video and what he's actually saying. So I can go ahead in time or back in time if I want to call him out on something. There's going to be... It's like he talks so much about so many different things at the same time stats on that weapon or armor that gives you some bonus stuff so for example it might be oh more items will drop for you or maybe you'll do increased damage or you'll add a lightning effect to your weapon so it's pretty much a random roll when you find loot in this game and there is a ridiculous amount of it to be found everywhere half the gameplay is picking loot up off the goddamn ground like i said throw back to classic diablo in a lot of ways now you can either choose to just equip that loot as is or you can take it to the blacksmith to have that blacksmith either dismantle Mantle it for components so you can make your own kind of style of armor and weapons or if you have a weapon that you play with enough and you max out the familiarity bar which is basically a component where if you play with a certain weapon a certain amount all of right time, this is kind of a waste of time but he's explaining everything this is not supposed to be in a review you can just mention it and say hey there's a randomized loot or whatever it is and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, depends on this and this and this. But showing it off like in, in so extensively, I don't know. I guess if somebody else did it in a way that is better, because naturally they would make it better, it would be better. But when DSP does it, it's just tiresome and boring. And that's not just because I don't like him, because I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt for some things. Although but there may it's just be a certain bad and tedious. And who out there does not like the difficulty level of these games and has always coasted through them with the help of a co-op friend. If that's the case, sadly, Neo may not be the game for you because you're not going to get that kind of assist throughout the game. And you may Oh yeah, there's no script. There's you. never been a script for now, this. Now there's a final batch of differences with Neo that I want to call out and they're really grouped together because in my opinion, these are the, some of the best things about the game that have improved upon the From Software formula that have to be applauded if you're going to play Neo. Number one, the camera. Yes, every once in and a while. And of course, the issue, camera. But guess Are you going to run into a wall? The camera of the Dark Souls franchise that constantly gets caught on doorways or walls or goes extreme close up in your effing face, especially when there's an enemy mob. Show me an example. This Come on. This is one of the things where you should show it. Happens in Neo. Okay, in fact, so it was good. That's day, a positive. If you have a wall or something between you and the camera. Guess what happens? The wall becomes transparent. It's a no-brainer. Why the hell couldn't they have done that in the three Dark Souls games? He's so fucking mad. Because they don't make the games. Who made this? Ninja Theory? Team, Team Ninja. Team Ninja didn't make Dark Souls, you dipshit. I Why didn't they make it in this other game that completely different people that don't know each other probably made? Been calling it out ever since the I don't Dark Souls know. 1 that this was a problem. Learn how to move the camera. You can't have the same issue in like six games. Neo fixes the issue. In fact, there was very rarely ever a time, maybe once or twice during my... And the issue 90% of the time from what I've seen him do directly is he runs himself into a wall and gets himself cornered. Just the same thing that happened with him playing Sifu because that happened several times during that playthrough. He puts himself in a corner and then the camera has nowhere to go. Because he's put himself in that position. And then he starts crying before he even turns the camera around. Entire playthrough where I accidentally ran into an area where I couldn't tell what was going on because the camera was a little bit out of position. For the most part, the camera is... He's completely mad. winded and pissed off. Which is what you want to hear in a review. A guy being pissed off and angry. improved from that. Unless it's Angry Joe or somebody that is probably British because that's more fun. If, if they're pissed off, I'm, I'm talking about uh, 21 Kiloton, for example, who is not a massive channel, but he's fun.
uh just a, a quick derailment here it is here it is and he took out a video of rainbow six extraction was most likely done as a talking point for the press so yeah unless you're you're angry joe or british don't be pissed in your reviews because it's not funny was implemented in the from software series and that's a huge positive thing now another huge positive thing about the game is the frame rate one thing that i've always had a gripe about with dark souls and bloodborne is that they only run at 30 frames per second and it always feels just a tiny bit sluggish in particular the dark souls franchise it seems like there's a little bit of delay between when you push the button and when you actually uh, it's, it's a frame jerk off whoop my ass like in every one of these. it really feels like the developers of neo really emphasized the, the shortcomings of the From Software games and fixed them. Fix them. Wait, do we have an F? I think there was a minor F. Oh yeah, but it, uh, we're back. We're back. I don't get to see these in real time, I guess. I love that. I but yeah, so uh, fix them. Really feels like the developers <laughs> yeah, listen of to this. really emphasized the, the shortcomings of the From Software games and fixed them. And it's a big This is the drunk side feel. I love that they basically listened to fan feedback from a different franchise and said, Shout out well, to we're going to do it Grug. better. And I think they effectively Shout out kind of done that in this game. And as for a first outing, especially in a new franchise that looks like it may be an established one because it sold so well, Neo is great. This is like. Eventually, when he, when he starts drinking on stream, it's going to be hilarious. Because the narrative is gonna be, you guys know I'm I'm so much more fun when I'm drunk, and then that's gonna be the beginning of the end, and it's gonna be talking about politics and shit in wrestling. It's gonna be the the pre-stream podcast followed by a different podcast that is about something else because that's what DSP does. Expecting for a first entry into the series, so definitely pleased with what I saw with Neo, especially with some of the major improvements from the From Software games. And so, for a first installment in what looks to be... And a so, let's let's summarize this 20-minute rambling. Let's see how he's going to summarize. And fresh IP in the gaming scene, Neo does an outstanding job, in my opinion, with only a few real annoyances that I want to bring up before I give you my final review score. First, that blacksmith crafting system should not be random number generated at all. If you're bringing in the highest level components that you've grinded for in these missions and you've really busted your ass to get the money and everything you need to make it, and then you go and craft it and you get a common instead of the rare or the higher level one that has the components you want, that's bullshit. Ah, yeah, the components you want. You've really what was this? You've really your ass to get the money. What was and this? This is a pre-recorded video. You don't... You need to make oh. it, and then you go and craft it, and you get a common instead of the rare or the higher level one that has the components you want. That, <laughs> that's bullshit. It doesn't make any sense. Bro, it shouldn't be in the game. Bro, this is like you could have just done a, a, a new take, and he could have done a new take of only that sentence. That's all that it takes. Because this, uh, the audio recording software is easy as fuck. Audacity is easy as fuck. And all he had to do is just record the same sentence again. But no, instead we get a wah. Random number generation crafting is for MMOs, so people will keep sinking money into them to get the stuff that they want, rather than this kind of game It just doesn't belong. It seems out of place, and I don't understand why that's in there. Number two, the fact that there are three stances in the game, but they're not necessary in order to beat the game. Sure, maybe if you master the game and you do all three stances, switching between them flawlessly at all times, it'll make the game a little bit easier. But for the most part, every time I played Neo, I never had to really switch Hold stances. Mid-stance was enough for... How is... Having to learn three more stances and getting good at them make the game easier. Because it's like having to learn them makes it harder, right? And the easier thing is to just do the one stance. I don't know. I don't Every know. Single fight just nitpicking. It's okay. Yeah, maybe it would have added more variety and flair, but if wow. it's not necessary, why overcomplicate things? The same thing kind of goes for the... I don't know. Why is this video 25 minutes long? Jutsu items and stuff. Yeah, they're in... This the is the summary, and it's like four minutes long. Come on, just wrap it yeah, up. Maybe they make the game a little bit easier if you master them, but they're not... And the death counter is massive. I don't know why it's so big on a screen. Necessary. If maybe death they counter. balance the game a little bit better in a sequel and make it so that you need to really utilize the two weapons at a time or going through different stances or whatever, then maybe... Maybe I could say it's a little bit better, but for now, it really does feel like the combat could be played a lot more simplistically than they lead you to believe, and that is a shortcoming of the game. And then finally, yeah, I do have to say that a lot of the side content... Oh, so you can auto-swap the stances, and he didn't do it because 
obviously it, it would require them to read something it does seem to be kind of a repetitive grind unlike the from software series where there's entirely optional areas that you go to with new bosses and new discovery of enemies and stuff that you can skip if you don't want to do in neo the real side content is hit or miss sometimes it's a unique fight and a duel that you don't want to miss and another time it's a completely boring grinding repetitive mission on a, ma a map you've already been on so it's a the mixed Twilight bag are 100 repetitive grinding so yeah, uh, they yeah i'm so fucking that. In a sequel. So all factors considered, I give Neo a 9.5. What? Out of 10. It's one of my favorite games. Yo. Of the years. It ranks up there with as good. What is this? A what? For real? As the best from a, an actual meme score. The meme score. The 9.5 score. Ah, uh, get the fuck out of here. Let's see a, an actual review of Neo. The actual score. Neo review. Wow, mixed fucking bag. We're not watching IGN because that shit is ass. We're gonna watch uh, before you buy because it's actually six minutes. But hey, but there's no score. He doesn't give a score because he's smart, and uh, ACG doesn't give a score. And Neo uh, zero punctuation, which is my my favorite channel, The Escapist. Felt like someone got startled just as they were expecting. But this is gas. there's also no number in here. I want a number. Give me a number. Uh, Donkey thinks the second one is fun, which is cool. Then uh, we have do not buy Elden Ring. Very disappointing. This is clickbait. This has to be clickbait because it's going to be ratio. Yeah, 11,000 dislikes. So it's for real. He is for real. Constantly losing in the game makes it less fun. This is a lit fucking review. Lit. Uh, yeah, go watch, watch this review. It's so fucking good. Uh, some maidenless activity. Okay, let's see how much IGN g gave it as a reputable source. Use of the boss arena. Be aware that while it's fun and easy to summon friends to help you through difficult sections, co-op can make even the toughest boss a little too easy. Luckily, what? Neo's answer to that are its Twilight missions, ultra challenging replay. Okay, girl, give me the the number. System and an unexpectedly charming yet gritty style. All Whoa, no! What? What? They also gave it a meme score. Baller alert. What? Shout out to your buddy Grug. Well, all right. I guess they liked it one one tenth, one point more than fucking Phil. A 9.5. Well, thanks fucking IGN. Thanks. I guess it is a 9.5. Go play it right now. Fuck, nice. Software games, in my opinion. So does that make him equivalent of an IGN reviewer? Except those people were kind of honest with me, and they wasted only five minutes of my life. And this fucking asshole makes a 25-minute review. We're on the fence about it because you were- Ah, this we... fucking sucks. This fucking sucks. Get get everybody out of here. But what I have pulled up is, uh... Is DSP failing on the first boss in the DLC? And he was under leveled. Uh, the the range is of, of the levels is around 150, and he was 108. My God. What? What? Date Shikisan. Oh my God. I'm gonna watch a little bit of this, and then maybe we can go watch him play against ludwig a little bit and just the rage quit i just want to see the rage quit dude it's not fun games are meant to be fun oh my oh, god wow. wow dude he does so much damage he's ridiculous he's insane damage Every time he hits me, I have to heal or I'm going to die with the next hit. I'm supposed to be a tank and I'm taking damage like a bitch. Dude, that is so cheap. He throws that fucking thing and it does insane damage. I haven't gotten down to half-life yet. Yo, is this a guy with centipede arms? Life. This is ridiculous. There's an arm that is a centipede. Do, and it fires some stuff. I don't know. I can't really it's wild. Damage. Yeah, it's incredibly hard for me to dodge his stuff. I mean, I got a tank build. 
Why, dude, why is he do 50% damage? He does insane damage with one hit. What the fuck? I'm supposed to be a tank. I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat this boss, honestly. He's a out of control. Look, I can't, I can't even block a tank like I'm supposed to. Wow. And get freed for, from the mortal coil, dude. Gets destroyed. It's gonna get destroyed again. So this is five deaths. And let's skip to forward. And here there's some face cam, so you know it's gonna be juicy complaining. Because, of course, I'm not gonna go through this 25-minute thing and just say, Hey, Phil died. Phil died again. Well, now I'm done. I have no stamina. Yep. If you get hammered by that arm, you're done. Once you get hammered by the arm, you can't move. You get stunned. It's like a stun move. It's like a stun chill. Bullshit. And now he has a centipede arm and a centipede tail. This guy is wild. He attacks the other direction after the two heads. Oh yeah, he died like 80 times? And this guy? Because it started from like a double, single digit death. It was uh, 13 or let's say 5. He started from 5 and died a massive amount of times. You're done. 75 plus Man. fucking times. That's and there's bad. more. If the spin comes out, the game's over. Spin! Spin. Let's be honest here. The real problem with this boss fight isn't the boss. It's that he's overpowered. They're expecting that you've grinded oh. like crazy. You're under level. The, the expected level for the DLC is 150. Yeah. I beat the game at level 108. Okay. So they're expecting that Go you're grind. 40 levels higher than I am to be playing this DLC. Because they assume that you love the game so much that you've grinded like a madman. Yeah, dipshit, you bought the DLC. If you didn't love the game, why would you buy the DLC? That is the same thing, but more. He's a fucking madman. That's why I'm dying in one to two hits. In reality, I should be able to take four, five, six hits and not die. But I can't because I didn't grind and do post-game repetitive bullshit gameplay. Bro, well, you gotta. You gotta. That's why this is so hard. That's why I this hard. Official cap. To make this harder than it should be. Ah, oh, get the fuck out of here. Stop bitching about it. Either grind or get the fuck out. Or don't cry about it. I never pressed the attack button. I, I never, never pressed. pressed the attack button. I have no idea what happened. He started attacking. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Is it 86 or 85? I don't even care. 86. I don't even know what the, the death count was. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, he did grind in Bloodborne a lot. He grinded a ton in Bloodborne. He was like level 90 from farming the first, like what, two levels, I think. It, he was he was farming so much that it made Tevin make one of his first videos on DSP. Complaining about why the fuck did he grind so much in a game that's supposed to be fun to watch and when you're overpowered, it's not that fun. It's not fun. Spin move! I did it again! He fucking did it again! Alright, let's uh, skip, skip, skip to the actual rage quit. What is this, a tweet? Oh no, it's his chat. What did his chat say? He did it again! Fucking spin move! He fucking did it again! It kills me every time, the spin move! I can dodge all his attacks, but the fucking spin move kills me every goddamn fucking time. Spin fucking move. Stupid fucking game, man. I just want to chill and have fun. This game is hard and it expects me to do other stuff. So I'm not under level. <laughs> Massive hack 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 wave in his chat. Dude, he always kills me with the same fucking spin move. The first hit is ridiculously fast and does too much damage for being a fast attack. And then if you get hit by it, you're done because the spin move hits twice. And even then, if you're not dead, there's a fourth follow-up hit. The spin move. That's what, six deaths in a row to the spin move? Yeah, fucking, really fucking dead. Okay, 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 okay. So, after okay, okay. playing the very first Neo DLC for what? Well, oh, we're quitting it? Four hours or whatever? Four hours. Let's go. What I can tell you is, it's ridiculous. They made it insanely hard for...
through regularly, like, that is just, ter it's terrible. It really is because a lot of people like me have other shit to do. I'm not going to casually grind in this game and do the, because they did a lot of free DLC, but all the free DLC was terrible. It was all just like <clears throat> repetitive yokai missions and shit, you know, Twilight missions that were added and they're not very good, which is why I didn't play it. Not very good, which is why I didn't play it. Um, now I come back to do the DLC and they expect me to have grinded like crazy to fucking play this? That is really dumb, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you no, have right? to. What the hell? What? Stop complaining. Uh, it's your fault. You died. What the hell? Huh? The boss door won't open. Uh, restart the game. What the fuck? No, let's just bitch about it Dude, instead. The boss door won't open. Yeah, restart the game. Probably glitch. And he's gonna restart the game. Is it gonna be back? It does. Die. Already way too difficult for the sake of being fucking annoying rather than actually having some kind of interesting challenge to it. Well, it does. You Don't just failed so the challenge. Alright, let me die. Oh, wait, what? For real? Get killed and see what happens. This is gonna be oh, way, no, permanently I'm gonna glitched? Counter because I just did it on purpose because of a game glitch. Yup, that fixed it. Okay. Alright. Oh, that's Good. okay. It's a good thing it fixed it. But uh, he still failed as fuck. So yeah, let's uh, go see his Ludwig Rage Quit, which is great. Ludwig, you know what it is. The Great Bloodborne Rage Quit. This is an hour long, but obviously I'm not going to watch this whole thing. If you want to watch the whole thing, you can go You can go watch Tevin's video on it. It's, uh, it's three hours. Um, what is this? Ludwig dies reading DSP's bad takes. Oh, yeah, I saw this. this uh, it's a funny clip from his stream. Now there we have, uh, yeah, let's just go to the first one, and this one. It's a Mighty D video, so it's bound to be good. Delightful. And then we get a, let's see if he rage quites, says somebody in his comment section, I think. And then we have basically the same content for an hour. Let's keep fighting the same guy. Same excuses, same complaining, same bitching, same guy, same Phil. So fucking stupid. I will do two attacks back to back that will take your whole bar. Fuck you. Uh, DSP versus Guardian Ape. Yeah, I watched this, I think, even live. Um, he obviously knew what was going on. He reads he reads guides about this and nowadays talking about um, What was it talking about Elden Ring is also he admitted straight up that he read a guide He admitted straight up that he was explaining he was explaining to people what happens if you hug the lady That she gives you a debuff and shit like that. He he went and watched all the all the videos he watched all the guides and the videos and shit which there's no shame in, but at least don't brand yourself as the real guy who's going in blind and doesn't know anything about the game. It's perfectly fine if you want to fucking just fuck around and play any game the way you want. But it's, uh, yeah, he has to be fucking Phil. Big ups King of Prominence for the Mature Adult membership. Enjoy your exclusive content. And we are getting it started, I guess. This is the first death. Now, of course, I don't know anything about this, so I can't really tell him how he should fight the boss. But maybe he was underpowered? Maybe. Of course. Can't dodge. What do you want me to do? Look, I can't even get away. Where am I? <laughs> I can't hit him at all. What the fuck? What the fuck? Come on. Oh, and he was under leveled for this as well. And then rage on the very first death. Like actual salty, salty rage. Salty, salty rage bothering with it i'm not gonna bother with it what do you mean i'm not gonna bother with it if they're not gonna give me credit wait what, what? Doing? what the fuck 
What? I'm dodging, and I'm dodging out of the way. Not like you could tell what direction to dodge because the camera just rotates randomly when he jumps in the air. Okay, so I'll dodge. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, fuck it. If it's going to take 90% of my life, I'll put the controller down, and I'll fucking wait, and I'll do it again. I'm not going to waste my time. Big ups, King of Prominence for a dollar ninety nine super chat. I just won the perks. Well, Cat took all of them. Too bad. You gotta talk to Cat. He took all the perks. That's why she looks like this. Can't have the perks. I got some lean if you want. She didn't take that. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> You know, I'd really like to play the DLC instead of just the one fucking stupid boss over and over. Okay, let's go to the next death. I'm just gonna skip to, to him dying and complaining because that's the fun part. Does he heal now? Yeah, he's gonna heal and then he's instantly gonna take damage. Do we have a death? Oh, he got the first form uh, out of the way. So now we're on the Holy Blade. And what's the Holy Blade before that, right? No, no. Okay. It was a little cutscene. Looks cool as fuck, though. And now it's about to get clapped. Oh, no. It didn't do anything. Why are you getting hit when you do didn't do anything? dead let's see the oh, reaction ah. rip rip fill but this is he came pretty close i guess to him uh with here we go again second form actually isn't that bad if he doesn't hit me with that cheap ass double slash that takes my whole fucking life bar which is bullshit And rip again, let's skip to the next try, because now we have to wait for him to actually get to the boss, then fight him, and then he dies. What? Whoa, he got straight up one shot. Wow, that was lit, let's see this again. Straight up a one shot. Oh, wow! What the fuck? <laughs> nice. Nice. Wow, explain now, now. In explain now. What the fuck? Remind the stream. I'm actually doing way better against him, doing really well. He jumps straight up. What? He there extra time than before. I'm dodging. He still adjusts in midair to land on my dodge and does 100% damage. Yeah? <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Right they, they scripted this boss to specifically mess with Phil. Uh, the fair fucking boss. Let's go to the next time he dies, which is, I guess, here. Almost immediately. Because at some point, that's the thing with those games, and even I know him as a guy who doesn't play him a lot. If The more you try and brute force a boss and try and just fuck around and just beat him raw... The more you're gonna get out of your element and you're gonna start getting distracted and you're gonna start and trying to rush it and it's not gonna work out. So you need to get in the zone. And also these games are made in a way where when you die a bunch of times, you can't really get in the zone that much. I'm just gonna die. You can't really focus that much because it, it's the idea of it is just to, to, to throw you off. And he's dead again. I didn't even bother. I didn't bother because I didn't even want to waste a single potion on that. Because at the very beginning, I dodged. It didn't dodge. I lost it was fucking 70% life. Nope, sorry. Not even going to bother. Okay, skip, Not skip, skip. He wasn't pressing the button and... Oh, almost died. I guess, but he wasn't actually killed. Alright, 
and he died again. Did it glitch now? Wow. This time it glitched? Back me against the wall, now I can't move! You backed yourself against the wall. Back me against the wall. Back me against the wall. No, you put yourself there. Once again, RNG. RNG? Yeah, now do a string of attacks. I'm gonna do the bite. It's a bite combo, which is like three or four bites, and then it's lunge. Then immediately following the lunge, I'm going to enter into my lunge attack. So now I do super duper range, and there's no way for me to get out of the way. So sounds good, man. It's random number generator. Sounds Very good. Nice. <clears throat> Let's go for some more dying. And, and of course he gets tilted way too quick and he loses immediately. And the more and more I think further we go into this video, he beats the boss for less health and less health every time. So he gets consistently off his game throughout this hour. I don't even want to do this. Oh, and this would piss me off about some people. When they lose, they just drop the controller. This is the lamest shit. Just lose with some fucking honor. Come on. You might be getting destroyed, but come on, die die fighting. Not this. Uh, I don't care. This is bugged. I'm not gonna play anymore. Let him kill me. Come on, kill me. No, this is lame as fuck. And he couldn't dodge. Now, I did what I Wait, what? It magically changes its tune. Oh, you shouldn't have done this on New Game Plus. New Game Plus, you die into all the, everything in this DLC in one to two hits. You shouldn't have done that. Well, I did what I was told. Everyone said, dude, just do it on New Game Plus. I did what so I, I was did. told. And lo and behold, now I'm getting fucked up. What did you expect? <clears throat> Fucking sword. Okay, let's go for some more. I try. That's okay, just take 75% with one hit. There goes Black Mage Triple Six for a super chat. Uh, uh, FromSoft has anti DSP code in every game. If your account name is Dark Side Fill, the entire player physics engine becomes slower. Yeah, they have specific scripts for DSP. They have uh, the camera gets glitched, everything gets glitched, basically, and it's specifically for him. I Probably somebody in that company has a weird like thing with DSP where they just want to make him salty. Yeah, <laughs> it's a cool thing you can think about. Of and big ups to Paul J. Brazel for a super chat. Uh, Phil re read a guide. He knew how to get the sword too. He a thousand percent read guides. Because him being good at these games is like a statement of how good of a gamer he is. Because you know, if he's trash at this, as he is, everybody's gonna call him out and say, Phil, you're a shitty gamer. You shouldn't be doing this for a living. Well, being a gamer really isn't something that prestigious, and especially with games like this that are hard, you can just be bad at it, it's okay. It's not illegal to be bad at games. It's really not. Wow, explain that! Great! But being bad at games, and then trying to put on the persona that you're not, is kinda lamer. Or, or giving excuses all the time. Just fucking be bad at the game, it's okay. People are bad at games. It's a video game. Alright, let's get to the part where he dies. He charges. And he died again. No more screaming this time, though. Wow, no I died. screaming. Look at the camera! What the fuck, dude? Oh, and it was the camera's fault. What happened to the camera? Let's see. He dodged, okay? He dodged. He oh, dodged again, the and then the camera fucked up, allegedly. The camera went back where it was supposed to be, isn't it? Because he was locked on. Alright. Guy jumps. Camera switches because the guy was behind him. So the camera rotated. And then the guy wasn't behind him anymore. Dodge, look at the and now it went back to as it was supposed to be. Because he is locked on to him. Yeah, if it wasn't locked on, it wouldn't have spazzed out like this. What the fuck, dude? But it's the camera's fault. Nice Who knows, camera. maybe the camera was bad. Nice fucking camera.
He charges me. I try to dodge to the side. It hits me. Anyway, even though I'm dodging Wings side, is a better gamer. I agree with that. I, I do things. I, I do think Wings is better at games. Oh, because here's the camera. And he's also open to playing with other people and talking in a voice chat. Even though, as as you know, he's got uh, trolled basically every time he's done that. But he's still persistent in doing it. It twists and then it twists again. Give him so some credit. I know where I am or where I'm supposed to go before I, I'm getting up. Oh, dead. Yes. Rip, 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 rip. I was really not I am frustrated, oh, salty time. I'm trying, you know, not to really say too much because there's nothing to really be said anymore. You know, what else am I going to say? Uh, you're going to say it's not really fun. Not anything to say. Just keep playing. Games are meant to be fun. And some people it's not say, even why fun. I, why haven't I summoned anyone to help me yet? Why, you know, there's no shame if you give it a, a, an honest try and you can't do it. Why not summon someone, right? Because I'm under the impression that I played the entire Bloodborne game. You know, I beat the entire. I even beat whatever the hell, Astorius or whatever the or no, Ebrietis, Ebrietis. I beat that boss. I beat everything. Yeah, I quit in the Chalice Dungeons, right? But I beat everything in the game that was story based, right? All right. So there's no reason. What about the DLC? Why I shouldn't be able to beat every boss and beat the DLC? But you were kind of close to beating him. That's that's kind of thing. It's not like a brick wall. In one of the first attempts, he got to his second form and actually dealt over 75% damage, I think. So that would kind of make you think that he wasn't underleveled or anything. He was just bad at fighting the boss, which is a thing that happens. I mean, it should be but no. fine that you can beat it by yourself. Not that you need summons to beat it. That's, that's my impression. I beat the whole game. I should be able... To beat this boss by myself and it's just a matter of, of fucking patience and keep plugging at it and not getting you know i am frustrated but not getting all upset and screaming and shit just fucking keep trying gotta keep trying these these are the ear infection headphones they're the iconic headphones that gave him ear infections all right let's go let's go let's die some more bro Was there an excuse for this one? <laughs> and look, he, he gradually deals less damage to the boss and, and gets saltier. Oh no. But this is this would be exactly what would happen if I played Elden Ring and I was streaming myself. I would just be bad at it. But I would say at least it would be kind of fun because I wouldn't really make all that many excuses. It would just be like, fuck it, I died, let's go do something else. Or something like that. Okay, the same thing, the same gameplay, the same gameplay. Die already, come on. And you died. Okay. What is the excuse for this one? And Rip, there was no reaction to this. He's just... Just salty. Nothing. But right here, we're in the middle of the video. There's not a lot of uh, salt, per se. Right. Let's get to the actual end, including the monologue that he did in the end, where it was actually just simply not fun. Um, I, okay, I'm gonna start it from here. There's a good, like, six to eight minutes. Because this is the whole thing. We watch, I don't know, 20-ish minutes of it, I guess. And this is the same thing. Fail count is at 60. All right. Well, he at least got to the second form, which is something. But now we're about to see a, a, a massive release of sodium. And look at the... What, what is he doing? What is he doing? The thing that he hates the most. He put himself in a corner. He put himself in a corner. And it's just like the camera glitched out because it doesn't know what to do because he put himself in the corner. He can't see the character taking damage. Terrible. Oh, 
Alright, this... You shouldn't have got hit by this. It was easy to telegraph, I guess. Okay. How is he gonna die? I'm curious. Is it gonna be a combo? Is the guy gonna do the five-star frog splash on top of him? Do a massive backflip. And rip, this is the story. <laughs> this is the story all about how his life got turned up upside down. That is what happened. Yeah, I'm done. We're I'm getting kidding. done. This is not I fun. Ability, as you saw, I ran away. I was a fun quit. And I still get killed. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. And of course, this is a it's a good comment. You can't go about this pretending that none of these losses were weren't your fault. You had a piss poor strategy and you never changed it, and you got served by one of the Soul Series best for it. It's dumb. It's it's the first boss. And for someone like me who's not a super hardcore Bloodborne fan, I why are you playing the DLC? You're not a super hardcore fan. You what? And uh, how is it the first boss? It's a DLC. It's not the first boss. It's like I don't know how many bosses the Dark Souls have. Like 15 is the 16th boss, for example. I like playing Dark Souls, I like. I'm not a super mega fan. Like, what do you mean? Playing Bloodborne, should I have to kill my fucking self and relearn the entire fucking gameplay pattern of the game? What? To beat the first boss of the DLC? No. no. So the bottom line is, this DLC is not for me. It's for other people. It's for other people. It's obviously not for me. You know, it's for someone who wants to sit here and learn and grind and learn and grind and learn and play this for seven, eight hours. Oh, okay, here's the pattern, and here's how you dodge this attack, and here's how you dodge this attack. And by the way, I can't use this big sword anymore, so I need to use my light sword and completely change up my gameplay patterns. And I don't find that fun. I don't. I have way too much other stuff to do. I have a lot more fun. It's not fun. Stuff. I've tried every. I've tried different weapons. I've tried summoning the NPC. I don't care. This should not be the first, this should be the final boss. If this were the final boss, all right? All right, let me give you a detoxified excuse how you can drop a game without being a fucking asshole and taking all the blame out of yourself. And it's very fucking simple. You guys, I died 60 times to this guy. This is not really entertaining to watch, so let's do something else instead so you don't sit here being bored. So instead, I'm gonna probably, maybe grind off screen or something and then next time i play it i'm gonna pass this guy and it's gonna be chill but this hour of just actually three hours three hours of bullshit content i don't believe it's of a, a good standard to the public to maybe uh, whatever whatever and that's all you, you need to say that's all you need to say and of course somebody's gonna say oh you rage quit or whatever whatever yeah fuck it yeah. Why? Why not? The final Why not rage quit? Boss. Great. That's all you gotta say. All right. Great. It's not. It's the first. It shouldn't be that difficult. It's the first of a DLC, and the DLC you play after you complete the game. So it kind of has to be more difficult than most of the bosses in the normal game. It kind of has to be. And some people will love it, and I fucking hate it, and I just don't want to play it anymore. I don't listen. I have no voice. I just don't care. I don't care. I've lost all motivation to play the game anymore, and I played twenty bucks. For a fucking DLC that no one cares about, and I no care. one cares about. By the way, what do you mean no one cares about? Are you everyone? No one cares about, and this is my favorite thing when when you say because when people say this, and I say this quite a bit, when people say no one cares or everybody hated it or everybody thought it was shit, it's a, just a generalized statement, and you actually kind of mean to say I don't care about it and I hated it and uh, I didn't like it. Everybody. But this, like, absolute statements is just garbage, and it never helps anybody's case. If anything, it just kind of exposes you for kind of being full of shit. Either at this point. I wanted to really see it, and uh, now I won't. And I just, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not going to waste more time on this fucking bullshit. It's, it's bullshit. It's not fun. A fucking boss, right? A fucking boss that kills you with two hits, no matter right. what. Like I said, you can very much detoxify the situation by saying, this is not fun for you watching this. This is not fun to watch. So I'm going to go grind off screen or I'm going to just drop it all together to do something that is more entertaining for you. But no, all of his excuses, all of his rationales and all of that, that narratives, it's all about him. 
he completely takes away the entertainment value of what he's doing out of the situation. 100% death hits. But no, it's not fun for me, Re. It's kind of not about you. If it was about you, you can do shit offline. But when you do shit online on a purpose, it's about the people watching it. It's about the people that are online and in there for it. It's not really about you. And that's mainly his absolute number one problem is that he makes everything be about him. Especially content that is not for him. He's not gonna watch his fucking streams. So make something that is fun to watch, not fun for you. And if if uh, it's both fun for you and fun for watch, then you got the sweet spot. Crap, man. It's crap. I just don't care. Yeah, it was the same thing for... Um, yeah, the same thing with Dying Light. Apparently nobody cares about Dying Light. Nobody cares about it because he didn't see... Uh, people talking about it on Twitter because he didn't look hard enough because on Twitter all he sees is when you follow a topic such as gaming and you just see whatever it gets presented to you because I can actually go I think I could do this and see who he follows uh, they call me DSP and here he is the undying he rebranded himself again so he's following 71 people but I can't actually see who so yeah, but when you go on Twitter, uh, what you get is a bunch of trends that you can actually follow and you get shown general things about it. So if there's a tweet that is popping that is about uh, basketball, you're going to see it, even though you don't follow that person specifically. And that's exactly what he does and where he gets all his opinions and all his um, narratives on who likes what game and who doesn't. Oh yeah, and let's let's see that the uh, that GIF, that was a weird thing for some reason. I don't know why he published it. Um, this was three hours ago. It's probably kind of in the AM, maybe maybe around that time. I am very excited for more Elden Ring in the morning. And then we have this GIF of a black lady doing something for I don't know. This is supposed to be excitement, I guess, because this was the first thing that came out when he wrote excitement in the search. So yeah, I guess that's what you get for following Phil on fucking Twitter. Which you shouldn't be. Oh, oh yeah, Neo. I, I still had this open in a separate tab. It's a 9.6. But at least DSP called it a mixed bag. And these people called it an, uh, an amazing. Alright, let's talk some more about Ludwig. There was like, I, I, I felt like there was a big reward, right? Okay, there's not. It's the first boss. <laughs> Yeah, that picture, that picture pisses me off so much. And I think maybe somebody on Kiwi Farm said that as well, because I remember in, in the last 24 hours, somebody else said that as well. But I hate this picture. I hate it. I don't know what he's going for with it. It looks like a, a weird, humble face kind of thing. The, the face that you would make after a day of hard work. It's kind of like a, a late night picture. But I don't know why. This is supposed to be his his profile pic. It's so ridiculous. For no reason. And it makes him look kind of like a douchebag. You're right. Looks kind of douchey. It's the first fucking boss. <clears throat> you know? Yeah, I don't know if he's trying to be smug. Or he's trying to attract sympathy. Or anything else. So I really don't care. I just don't. And it's the first time in, in this game, at least, that I just don't really care. Okay, that's I fine. I really, I, it's not fun to me. It's not. <clears throat> At least with Ebrietis in the original game, it was fun because you knew that was the super secret boss. It was meant to be like the hardest challenge. You get a trophy when you fucking beat it and all that. This is just stupid. This is just fucking stupid, really. Uh, I have other stuff to do. I have other games I want to play. Like, uh, really, really okay. Play okay. Let's stop problem. talking about me. Point, stop talking I about me. Flip problem. this on the audience in a positive way. In a positive way. Even if you don't mean it, that's the thing. Even if you don't mean it. Because there's plenty of people that say a bunch of shit that they don't mean. Because it's the thing to say. Just say it's not fun for you guys. So let's go do something else. Completely turn me Or up. if it's fun for them, then you ham it up. And then you start giving like over-exaggerated things. But DSP is real. He is real. 
off. And again, so yeah, people who you love it and want to do it and want to challenge themselves and oh, I beat it on the second or third try. Of course you did because you probably play the fuck fuck out of Bloodborne. You probably beat the you game. Probably, right? yeah. You probably yeah. replayed it. This is the narrative that he pushes. These false realities. Oh, if you like this game and we're good at it, you probably were absolutely obsessed with it and you played hundreds of thousands of hours in it and you know everything about this game. If you don't fall into this category of my fake reality that I just invented, well, then then it's not a thing. You didn't like the game. Again, on New Game Plus, you can be real. Tons of different loadouts. You probably mastered the dodge. I mean, I yeah, you mastered everything. You did everything. You got all the weapons. You beat all the bosses. As he just told you, he beat a super secret fucking boss. He just told you that. Beat the, who was it, fucking Ebrietus, whatever. He beat him, the super secret boss. But if you beat the guy in this, if you beat Ludwig, you must be obsessed with the game. Through it once. And that's what time allows for me, to enjoy a game once. And that's it. I even went into the, the chalice dungeons of the game, which is outside of my own comfort zone. Wait, now we have a time constraint? This is what time allows me is to play a game once. Why are you playing the DLC? You finished playing the game. Go play something else. Normally I wouldn't do. What was he playing at the time? I enjoyed the main game. What was he playing? Black Ops 3? He was playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate in WWE 2K16. Nothing. Hot games. Like the original game. The original game had no difficulty spikes like this whatsoever, except for Ebrietis, who was supposed to be the be-all, end-all of the game. So, of course, it was that hard. This is just fucking silly. This is just silly. Whoa. A yeah. violent snort. It's just not Holy funny. shit. This not almost funny. broke through my 60, headphones. How many? I don't even know. I died at least 60 fucking times to this bot. I don't care. Yeah. I don't massive no. amount of times. Okay, I don't care. Fun. Okay. It sucks because I want. I would well, I mean, the DLC, but... yeah, this game you need to care because it's kind of one of those things. It's not. If you don't care, you can just go play Assassin's Creed. That's a game for people that don't care. Forget it. Ironically, I like it. I have... Yes, I am a hypocrite. I I have over 120 hours in Valhalla, but I I admit it's a very flawed game that might be for you. And if it is for you, you you're not. You're gonna drop 120 hours, and if it's not, you're not even gonna play for like five hours. Too much other stuff I'd love to do, you know. But yeah, if you don't care, go play Assassin's uh, Creed. You know, the bottom line is, although a lot of people seem to see want seemed to want to see me play this, really, uh, besides people on the live stream, also it didn't seem like a lot of people were turning out anyway to watch it. People were just kind of like, eh, more Bloodborne, you know. Which sucks because I really like the original game too, but you know, there's no, I have, no, I have no motivation right now to keep playing this. Zero, like zero. Okay. Motivation. Okay, but he feels obligated to give this large justification. Man, I don't care. It's not fun. You don't have to explain yourself. You literally don't have to explain yourself. So. All right, I guess that's it. What else can I say? Uh, it sucks. This first boss sucks. Way too difficult, especially me doing a new game plus run. I haven't even played the game on New Game Plus. Now think about it. I killed Father, I guess, Coin or whatever his name is. I killed Vicar Romelia first first try on New Game Plus. But I can't feel... Weren't you, like, farmed up? I killed every edit. I don't know. I this boss. I don't okay. know. Okay. It's like, if for those small um, analogies, comparisons, and stories that happened in the past, if I want to figure out if he's full of shit, I need to go back, watch his gameplay, figure out if he grinded, if he was overleveled, and then his shit starts to fall apart. But it requires way, way too much engagement on my part to go and call him out and figure out if he's, like, bullshit or not. Whatever, you know. Because we know he is. Very much a lot of the time. Fun. It's full of shit. Seriously. But this is not fun. Alright, I guess that's it. Uh, for a Bloodborne DLC, I'm very disappointed. As you, I've never, you, I know you never heard me like this before because I've never been this disappointed. Never hurt me you, like this before. Are you hurt? Said if you are not a insanely hardcore fan, who said this? A lot of the game who has different builds and who didn't play a certain style, you can't advance. Fuck. Who you. said this? That's did did they make a public statement about it? Ah, uh, big ups, your boy, for the super chat. You you mean games aren't your life? Please tip. Shame. Please tip. That's but this is my job, you guys, but I don't care about it. Dang. But also, I care about it. He's so just lost in it. And and uh, you're right. His his ego is hurt. And now he needs to justify it as, yeah, they said, they said the fucking, if you're not obsessed with the game and having thousands of hours in it, it's not for you. 
Nobody said this. Nobody said this. It just need to I grind more, probably. Play something that I am enjoying, then continue to grind and waste time on this. And I'll be honest, I guarantee you, I guarantee fucking to you, that these videos of me fighting Ludwig, no one's gonna really give a shit. Oh, ironic. Isn't it fucking ironic? Because this video has a hundred thousand views. Kevin's video that is three hours long has 90,000 views. Uh, then the outsider made a this is how you don't play the old hunters that is two hours long, 152,000 views. So we get into the irony segment where people actually cared more about this than let's say about 80% of what he did at that time, uh, besides probably jerking off. I guarantee it. People will watch. I guarantee it. Well, you're wrong. Okay. Actually, so wrong. Mean? But it wasn't those people that he likes. It was the wrong people watching it. it. Was the wrong people. Those fucking obsessed human pieces of shit. Let's see. Oh my God, Phil still didn't beat him. Oh my God, Phil still didn't beat him. Okay. When does he beat him? Oh, he never beat him. All right. Well, forget it. And they'll watch this final video, and that'll be it. No one wants to sit here and watch me wa do this endlessly for hours on end. You know, the stream had pretty decent attendance. And if I were a oh, he was he was name dropping attendance even back in the day. Attendance was a thing, because I started noticing attendance as a thing since he came back to YouTube. Gamer, who all I did was live stream and I interacted with the stream chat. Then maybe it would have made sense and been profitable. Profitable? What? Team had pretty decent attendance. And if I were a different kind of gamer, who all I did was live stream and I interacted with the stream chat then maybe it would have made sense and been profitable. Oh, nice. It would have made sense and been profitable to, to die on this guy if I was a different kind of streamer. Where he he is that kind of streamer nowadays. He is exactly that person. But this was an excuse from back in the day. Well, I'm not that kind of guy. For me to do this like this, it's not. I have way, way more things that I want to get to that I will enjoy more, will be better for the business, than sit here and just try to fight this one fucking boss for this fucking long seriously so okay so it's not a rage quit it's more of a i'm just not having fun it's and a fun I'm quit to kill myself especially <laughs> during this busy hardcore gaming season when there's so hardcore many gaming happen. season so when are you going to get back to wwe the silliest when are you shit gonna play more fallout when are you going to do this and i can't answer them because there's so many games this is something that's not the right timing and certainly not my cup of tea and it's not something that i enjoy and i don't want to do it all right all right it's a so lack of fun quiz and not shame. having fun in quit. my regard a shame because i know if i got past this boss i probably would have liked it yeah no this is a rage quit to the next it's a rage quit plus excuses which makes it a, a not having fun quit now there is something else that i want to watch actually this was supposed to be a question mark is there something else that i want to watch actually let's look up dsp gaming rage quit uh maybe a compilation maybe Rage Quit Moments 2022 edition. Hold on. This is a... How is it 2022 edition from two years ago? Jeff S. Gamer. Why are you clickbaiting me, buddy? This is from two years ago. Like, actually. A 2022 edition. But anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the bait and watch this video. This is... Uh, famous game Jump Force. Jump horse as as DSP plays it, I guess. This is a 2022 game, by the way. This is probably gonna be the last thing I'm gonna watch today. Was there input delay? Was there lag? Offline lag. I, I, you gotta love it when, when he has an excuse for offline games that is lag. Man, this this game had fucking lag. Oh, you know what I'm gonna watch? That's it. I'm, I'm not gonna see this video. Instead, I'll see GTA Fails and Rage. Because this is one of my favorite series of, uh, of chill. And we're gonna see the Rage from GTA. And there was the, the last uh, This Is How You Don't Play with uh, San Andreas. This is whole fu so fucking good. So fucking good. Oh, and he's gonna get busted. This is the best thing is when he gets busted. It's the best thing. What? That was completely 
unfair. I'm in a slow fucking car and I have to redo all that? That's fucking stupid, dude. That's fucking stupid. And yeah, there was this this terrible game design in those old games where you had to fail the mission if you want to get busted or something and then you had to drive back to the waypoint to restart the mission. That is so... And then something like this would happen. But the thing is that things like this happen way more to DSP because he's not good. That is fucking stupid! There's more... <laughs> Classic vintage rage. First, if I knew that, I'm gonna die again. Yep, he's dying. This sucks my ass. This mission is fucking. This stupid. sucks my ass. How am I supposed to do this faster? Oh, what? Oh my fucking god! He killed himself. <laughs> Did he kill himself for real? What did he do? Oh yeah, he blew himself up. This fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> what? He just died. He just fucking died. Let's get an instant replay on this one. This was just a random dying. He's, he has no health. And somebody just capped him. What? What? Where the fuck was that? <laughs> oh, a thousand percent he was drunk at that point. And he set himself on fire and died. What the fuck? This is the, the quality gameplay. What a stupid mission! Nothing to the game, it's too complex, fucking 20 legs of the fucking mission, and I already fucking beat it, and the game said the guy got away when he was directly in So much anger. What the fuck? So much anger? <laughs> smash! Grug smash. Grug pissed. This is fucking stupid. Grug is pissed off. Shout out to your buddy Grug, a nice lean-in manual. He gets a lean-in manual rage. I what? I didn't fail the mission. I never failed the mission. Oh, I, this is the, the iconic, uh, I never failed the mission. And one of my favorite things was when Medicur tuned in to DSP to restream him. This was one of the classic vintage original restreams. And the first thing he saw is mission failed on his screen. Mission failed and then DSP rambling about it. Say, I didn't fucking fail the mission. What a great internet moment. I never failed what? the mission. What? Large explosion. <laughs> I don't know if... I, I don't know. I, because I was gonna say, I don't know if he's got better or worse as time, but he just changed. Which is, of course, some things that used to be fun back then are now not that fun, and some other fun things are more fun, and the toxicity is more, but is more fun but the games were easier i don't know he just changed whether or not for for good or bad it's for from different perspectives it's kind of both but in in as a person in a personal aspect he got much 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 worse Stupid game. You can just drive well. Oh, and this is fucking Vice City, yeah. Shit, I couldn't, I couldn't fucking shoot him. The game. Uh, yeah, I think I figured it out. Now he got better in the way of never saying hateful slurs and shit like that, right? Uh, apparently, quote unquote, doesn't say racist stuff and stuff like that that people hate him for. Now this is his narrative. Uh, but this allowed him to also nowadays project himself as a much better person than he actually is just because he's not saying those things that are objectively shitty you shouldn't say and this gives him an excuse to be shittier and more negative nowadays because he thinks he's changed you know yeah yeah so bottom line is he's much better now you guys 
is much better. It's much better talking about the same shit every day. They fucking killed me. Unreal. Oh, and the, the RC plane mission. This is a, a classic bad mission. But it froze. Did it freeze or it was just the footage? My game is frozen. Oh, yeah. My game is frozen. My game is frozen. It's frozen. Yeah. Oh yeah, nowadays the gameplay is just unwatchable. Cause I would rather have it be bad gameplay, but a guy who is more excited and emotional and do stuff than just potato gameplay. Potato gameplay is the worst. It looks blurry as shit, he's bad, he's boring, and it's just nothing. It's all revolves around money because it's the because it's the um, what was it? The interactive streamer career. All right, missed your comment. Uh, let's see what what was it? Was, was it in the video? What did you say? Hold on. I took one fucking step. One step, and I failed the mission. One step. I don't know what you said, dude. See what I mean? This is random bullshit. This game is random bullshit. Can this mortal will be naked? Yes. You can't stop me. What? You pulled me out of the car? Yeah, I'm sorry if I didn't get it. What? <laughs> what? Bro, how are you this bad? Oh, and he waited for him with the shotgun until he was... So the game... The game waited for him so the guy didn't fucking shoot him with the shotgun in the face. It's complete and stupid bullshit. And he still failed. Because they shot your tires. Oh my god, no, he's getting banged. Uh, do I think DSP is on his way out? No way. No way. There's gonna be pay pigs bankrolling him until he's in the grave. Behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, in between the scenes. Backstage, outside, everywhere. There's gonna be pay pigs because they just exist just the way that he exists. Do anything. The bike wouldn't drive. Yeah, this is a great video. I love his GTA rage. So funny. Because the game itself is also like a clunky fucking old game. So yeah, it's very rageable. There's a random cut. What the fuck? And he got busted. Dude, instant busted. He instant bust. <laughs> Instant busted. Stupid. This is fucking stupid. What? Why am I Yo. Flipping? Yo. Flipping Yo. Come Yo. On. And we we still, by the way, we still, if you think about it really, really deeply, we still haven't had a DSP medical emergency. We haven't had this. Because you know when this happens, which is bound to happen because it's a thing that happens, he will have to not, not only pay his bills, his gacha games, his booze, but also hospital bills. So it's gonna be wild, like, next generation, 2044, uh, fucking begging streams. It's gonna be actually wild, I promise. And I don't even know what it's gonna be, but I promise. Oh yeah, he definitely has a lot of issues that he just didn't go to the doctor to check him out. Definitely. Which is, I mean, he... Yeah, if he can't address it, can't pay for it, then... I don't know. Can't blame him. But eventually he's gonna catch up. He's getting, uh... He's getting old. And now the thing with DSP in the last two years since he came back to YouTube, the whole narrative is that shit is getting better. Which is really, really interesting to watch. How he convinces himself that he is getting better, channel's getting better, engagement is better, support is better. Uh, I really like it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where it's gonna go. From like a, I don't know, a story standpoint. Because it's an interesting story. Because obviously, we all know it's not getting better. He got like 500 views a video. Unless it's Elden Ring, which gets a thousand. So no, that's, that shit's not gonna work out. And pay pigs are gonna come, they're gonna leave. 
maybe some gay op is gonna happen because gay ops always happens with DSP. That's just how how his life works. Somebody wants to fuck with him at some point because he's really punchable. And uh, there might be some YouTube cutting him off, YouTube not giving him gifted memberships. There's gonna be so so many more plot lines in the future. There's a lot to come from DSP. So he's not he's not going anywhere. Because basically he has nowhere to go. Like yesterday we saw in a piece of peace video, dude made $60 per hour in the last month. And that was a drop in revenue. He had like a 3% drop or something. And he still made 60 bucks per hour. So from now, from, from now on, this is his thing. He can't do anything else. And he won't do anything else. He doesn't want to do anything else. And he's okay with begging for the next 20 years. And humiliating himself with hats, with vests, with glasses, with fucking other stuff in the future. Uh, what program do I use to download? Depends. Downloading what? If it comes to downloading YouTube videos, I would use, uh, what was it called? Uh, Wondershare Uni Converter, which does a lot of stuff. And if it comes to audio, I would just use something like YouTube MP3 thing. They fucking position the car so you can't drive straight. I'm trying to turn it busted. What the fuck? Oh, you think he's gonna do? Do you think he's gonna have a jersey goal in je in jeans? I'm okay with the jersey. I understand that. Jeans, not so much because you can't really see them. It's not a good gimmick, and also takes a long time to put on. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of confused. And he got busted again. I wasn't even looking. To be annoying, fuck you, rock star. Fuck you, rock star. <laughs> Are you for real, dude? Oh, the zombie Skittles goal! That's some great obscure fucking lore. He was taking money. What was it, 20 bucks to eat Skittles? Legit! This is some great lore. Big ups, um, uh, Zion agent for this. I, I wonder if they have it somewhere. DSP Gaming, Skittles. Because that shit was crazy. Yeah, here it is. $200 Skittles scam. In spinning chair, and this from Ludacris, so he he ranted on top of this. So we're gonna see the first one, the snort burnout. Now this is this is a, a deleted segment, and the chair spin was a thing that Cat told him that he can do as a reward goal to to spin in his chair and to blow bubbles. That was a, an idea Cat gave him. So let's let's go to this the Skittles scam because I'm so fucking uh, happy I just remembered this anything to read he was getting it was basically like naming pokemon and he pussied out of that too because he didn't want to eat too many skittles because it was gonna make him puke or something legitimately he ate like five skittles or three he's probably gonna be more about these assholes than anything else i wonder if this is gonna taste good or it's gonna taste like shit now this is from i don't really even know oh 28th of september 2020 so it's somewhat vintage for the modern era you know, the goal today, by the way, guys, is still 100 bucks, even though technically normally it would be two streams where there's a $100 tips goal. Um, it's just going to be the one stream today. But it's going to be a much longer stream. My hope is that I can actually raise $200 because that would be about the amount that I would raise between the two streams separately. But we'll see what happens today. <clears throat> Don't worry if we hit the 100 bucks. I'm still putting on the vest. It's not like I'm making it increase <laughs> in the vest. Yeah. And yes, you got to love this vest streak. At, uh, was it what? Wait, what? We have a tips goal of $2,100? Oh, this was a fucking a special event type of situation. I get it. I said, <clears throat> yeah, it was some shitty fucking yes, begathon. Um, I will uh, eat three zombie skittles for every twenty dollars raised. Yeah, wow. three per every twenty dollars. He would eat three skittles. Three skittles. You know, skittles. They're tiny as fuck. Three every twenty dollars. He's not even like doing something fun, like taking a shot or fucking taking his clothes off or something. I don't know. By the way, guys, three skittles. I've already had to refund over hundred and twenty dollars of troll tips this morning. Oh yeah, that was a thing. That was a thing when they were fucking with him on troll tips. And this is, by the way, this is the actual way you get to fuck with DSP. Is with this. I'm not saying go do it. I'm saying actually don't do it because it's a it's a scummy thing. But it hurts him really, really a lot when you fuck with his tips. And and he can't keep track of what he made. What is a troll? What is the refund? What is a chargeback? And, and so on and so forth. But it's a really scumbag thing to do, so don't do it. It's lame. 
the same guy kept coming back. But he also wins all the chargebacks, by the way. He wins all of them, so don't worry about it. Right over. So I refunded all his bullshit tips and tried to block him from tipping, but I guarantee you he's going to keep doing it. What the fuck is that? Okay, it's Jump King, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the game. It's a great game. Great game. Not for me. All right. I actually, I guess now, I will spin in my chair, which is a reward for $200 in tips, which we did hit today. Um, it's gonna be very <laughs> I guess now I'm going to spin in my chair because this is the reward for $200. Two hundred dollars. You can feed a family for a long time, depending on how much you want to feed the family. Two hundred dollars to spin in his fucking chair as a literal like thirty-eight year old man. Exciting, life changing for some. Wow. Well, okay, ready? Let's spin it by chair. Need to create space. And look at this. And now this is very bothersome because he has to clean up space because he's a pig. He's a pig. All right, you guys, ready? Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, look at this! Wow! Wow! Especially sped up, it makes him look so much more ridiculous! Yeah, and this was the shitty chair, by the way. This was a shitty chair that he got and at first was like, Dude, I love this chair! And then a month later was like, Dude, this chair is garbage! Get it out of here. And now he is, of course, of course. Wow, you guys, it's like it's like when I get drunk in the middle of the night. Whoa. The same thing, but he knows how to control it. Spinning. Not a children's enter so. entertainer. A children's entertainer. Yeah. <laughs> and then we play Street Fighter Five. Yeah, here's the spinning again, in case you want to see it. Yeah, this is. I guess I gotta spin it by chair for two hundred dollars. Yeah! Excitement. Now some salt. Blow some bubbles. Come on, eat some Skittles. The scumbag. Two fucks about Jose. Oh, Jose. Shout out to Jose. Eating his ass. We're having uh, fetishes with Jose. This is a marathon, by the way. This is highlights from the marathon. Before, he used to eat food. And now all he does is just orders takeout and eats it on stream and complains about how it's not what they claimed it was. While meanwhile knowing nothing about it. Remember that stew that wasn't really a stew and was too hard to eat? Give me a salt. And he was lecturing people on how it's supposed to be eaten even though never having food from that country before? Yeah, that's Phil. Too far away. He's got a giant cowboy right there. All right, we skip this because because it's gameplay, which means it's not interesting. I, I had oh, salt. always hot teachers and you finish all your zombie skittles, dude. I don't even think I can eat anymore. Like I eat, I what? Eat two disgusting zombie skittles. And my he ate two fucking skittles, two fucking skittles, two normal size skittles. It wasn't like a, a mega size skittle special thing. He ate two skittles that he took money to do. Money, like actually, you pay him so he can put a skittle in his fucking mouth, and he still couldn't go through with it. Still couldn't go through with it. Like, what is the point? And I get it. If if money wasn't involved, then it would be chill, right? It's just a thing. Every five deaths, I'm gonna eat a skittle or whatever. It's ridiculous. You can do whatever you want. But then he takes money for it and then turns around and be like, I can't, I can't fucking do it, you guys. And another evidence that once he gets his money. Nothing else matters. Doesn't matter how many people want to see him play a certain game, what he's promised to do, what he planned or baited you into thinking that he was going to do. It doesn't matter. As soon as he gets it, the the any desire to do it is gone. It doesn't feel good. It actually does. My stomach feels bad. I had some trail mix during the break and my stomach's feeling queasy. Oh so my god. He's feeling, feeling fucking queasy. He's like borderline existing. Borderline fucking existing. Yeah, down these people. That's bad. yeah, and it says uh, bacon bits plays. This was bacon bits ahead of its time. Uh, cheered them a hundred bits back then when when there were bits. Who uh, says uh, if if you aren't gonna eat the candy you were paid to eat, aren't you worried about additional chargebacks? I suggest doing something else to amuse us, as this is what your life is now and forever. Which is very, 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 very appropriate because that's exactly what it is. 
this his life eating skittles blowing bubbles putting on vests putting on hats putting on glasses spinning in his fucking chair and rage quitting this is life and his life is great he's happy with it he loves it i love my life i love my life everyone hates me but everyone hates me well it is uh you can't please everybody as dsp likes to say you can please most of the people some of the time or some of the people most of the time but not everybody all the time how is he gonna react to this oh shut the fuck up okay all right that's right, no fucking stupid Skittles thing. No, I feel better later, i Oh, the play. stupid- Now it's a stupid Skittles thing. But it was a cool gimmick when he wanted to pocket the money. And then he did, and now it's a stupid Skittles thing. Nine of them? And after yeah. Oh, and now he's basically in debt. He is in debt with eating Skittles. Because he owes the, the fact that he has to eat Skittles. That's the thing. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. He managed to get himself in debt to his chat to eat Skittles. So he owes them Skittles to eat. Skittles! So what I'm going to do is after Street Fighter Five, I'm going to take a real break to eat dinner. I'll eat my, the dinner that my wife made. All right. Stomach. Hopefully the <laughs> my stomach, I'll feel better. Clown mode. Better. He can smell dinner from, from the top floor with the room closed or open or whatever the fuck he can smell the wife dinner oh, mind, i'm still streaming a long time today maybe later tonight i'll eat some more of the skittles oh yeah maybe maybe you keep giving money but maybe i'm gonna eat them you really and then i want to be fucking streaming for the rest of the day yeah get him out of here more money <laughs> the fuck out of here more money idiots <laughs> <laughs> Big ups, uh, down forward fun for the two month membership uh the skittles debt was Included in the bankruptcy, dude. I didn't think about that. He wrote it off as a business expense. It's all right. Everything's cool. I'm a mature adult with a business degree. A mature adult with a business degree. This is the origins, by the way, where it came from. When he was getting kicked off of Blip, he left this in an email. This was his video when he was addressing the boss at blip and he said i'm a mature adult with a business degree uh, business degree a mature adult with a business degree yeah you're not very fucking mature if you need to flex it after getting banned for racism but i guess it is what it is um. and then is there more skittles action but no it's the skittles fucking scam and i'm glad you brought it up zion agent He's that much. I'm just disappointed at how bad the game is, but was... And talking about how bad the game is. To you. No decency, no respect, no common sense, no... And that's the guy no who just doesn't get reality. Who just doesn't get reality. Yeah, <laughs> that fucking guy. And okay, I think this should wrap it up with the Tractor Thursday uh, extravagant enjoyment and fun event. Thanks, everybody, for participating and for being here on this early stream. For those who missed it and made it this far into the stream, you can leave a comment with how angry you are that I made it this early. And then I will give you a heart and I will probably reply with a kiss emoji. Sounds good. Now, let me hear... Actually, I saw there was an MC Jarbo song, which I'm actually interested in hearing. There it is. Uh, and this is some some shit we don't really talk about, but let's secure the song. I think it's good. Those uh, Jarbo the Hut songs, they're funny as fuck. So yeah. All right. Uh, see you guys around. Big ups. Vacation confirmed. For future streams, the timing I can't tell you what it's gonna be or how it's gonna be in the future. It's probably gonna be the normal one that I usually do because that's just good for me. But today I just had some free time, so I did this. Uh, if you want exclusive content, members get two videos from uh, at this point in the last two days. Uh, when explaining the only iced coffee interview thing where I took some notes and I just told you what I think about it. It's like a 10-minute video. And the other one is explaining the soundboard. So if you want some lore on this, you can go and uh, watch the exclusive member shit for like a dollar a month. And that's it. Big ups. Welcome back, Captain Jarbo. Give me a status report. Certainly. Since we last spoke, I Ball have alert. identified several weaknesses Shout in the out target. to your buddy Grug. You will shout out to your buddy the Grug. Saggots in the known galaxy. Your primary mission is to take down Ethan Rouse. 
Hey, guess who's back with the gay ops optics mat with the cockless style you guys rock with? Hot shit, hot check all the boxes, engage the cut switch, boot up the block lists. Guess it's time for me to be deemed Ralph sticking this lean and follow the cool team. So assemble a team, we've got a stream to kill into the grease mobile. Let's make Ethan lurking. We're really headed for the big sun with Gabe Optimus Prime. That was my impression. Sun. So let's see if we can dig some shit up, and if we can't fuck it, invent some. Uh, Look at this child, so innocent, kids gone missing, and dad's probably out of his mind. Are you listening? Big bad rouse looking out for fucking meth headed kids to be chasing in that fucking sham of a marriage. No kids, no kids. <laughs> Was the last woman damaged? There's loads of college kids up on campus that you can trap and drag back to the mattress. <laughs> the old man wouldn't have this. Uh -huh. Let Matt give you some practical tactics. Send her to me. Just like magic watch her come back with a sack full of black kids. How are you keeping them silent? With a punch to the eyelid or with a knife like I did? Welcome to Club Biden. If it ain't got no training wheels, we ain't riding. Now the takedowns are getting faster. Man, I never thought this student would become the master. Caught a lot of flack because I flagged down Fatsmas. The bitch, you got more fucking flags than an Atlas. Please stand by. Blockless low. So this little spick dog may put you on the block list, but can't do it better than me. I heard this motherfucker, Ethan Ralph, wants to fuck little kids, but he can't do it better than me. Nowadays, everyone is a false lagging bag, and it's tragic that even if you're on some gay op shit, I'm on some gay op shit. No, buddy, you'll never do it better than me. Baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back ribs, baby back pussy, and baby back tits. Get your ass out, dad wants his work, bitch. Quick, so maybe quit it, you fat Shout out to your buddy, bro. Between a fat pill popping baker sipping hick who just doesn't know when he's beat. Choose the pretentious fag who's only a talent being able to spray the fuck out of his cheeks. But Matt, would you date 18 year old? No. Not unless she's got a four year old bro. Not unless she can produce a GoPro. And we can go home and film with no clothes. If that's the case, then we'll split the load. Could that be the reason you randomly phone me? If church is to me, what college is to you? I pour gasoline and then leave all the clues. Worski, I'm just letting you know that the CP you own you got no right to show. That shit's my fucking copyright, you know? It sounds like you want another knock though. Fight you ho. Yeah, you're out of luck now. Cause it's cool to be the cuck now. Ain't nobody give a flying fuck now. Man, fuck that wheelchair shit, dog. Your man's got a truck now. And pesos, what the fuck happened to you? And how the fuck did you become such a tool? I guess your true color's starting to show through. And it's the color of a Jew. B -b -b <laughs> so this little spick dog may put you on the block list, but can't do it better than me. I am lurking. Motherfucker. Ethan Ralph wants to fuck little kids, but you can't do it better than me. Now it is. Everyone is a false lagging bag, and it's tragic. You open your mouth and you have it. Me! We're all on our own gay option. Oh my Nobody god. Buddy, you'll never oh my god. Better than me. Oh my god, you're speaking Jane. Jane. No. Better than me. No. Jane. No. Better than me. Bastard. Oh my god. No. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Better than me. I'm lurking. Guess what? Jane. No. 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 Better than me, no, she ain't no better than even if you're on some gay off shit. I'm on some gay off shit. Nobody, you'll never do it better than me. I am detecting multiple incoming takedowns from all quadrants. The flagging banks are rapidly mobilizing, formulating new gay ops countermeasures. Warning, your chances of survival are now zero percent. I'm lurking. Good Baller day. alert. Baller alert, calling out baller alert. Got no problems with baller alert, but everybody on baller alert and anybody else out there talking shit about me, here we go. Uh, that's a good question, Tractor Boost. That is a good question. Do I have a members only tutorial on the stuff that I used to, uh, to make the music remixes? I can make a video like that in the future. I like explaining shit and I can make it for members only because it's like, it's whatever, it's just like side content. I'm probably going to end up making one of those in the future at some point. Uh, because the one that I recorded today is about uh, how I make my thumbnails. And the previous one was about the soundboard. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be making shit like this and spread some knowledge if you're interested. So yeah, and that's it. That's for the stream. And all right, I'm going to play the baller alert and then I'm pressing end. Okay. All right. Baller alert. Calling out baller alert. Got no problems with baller alert, but everybody on baller alert and anybody else out there talking shit about me, here we go. And big ups, uh, wooden ox for the membership. And I should probably... Okay, I was gonna end the stream now, but I guess, uh, let this play out. All right. And, uh, I do have a Discord, yes. I can send you an invite, I guess, right now, actually. 
Okay, let's play one more one more fucking song. Okay? And you can ask me other questions if you, if you want to know something or whatever. But yeah, this is actually the end of the stream. My name is Richard. I am Dark Side Phil. Oh my god. I really need to make this fucking money. I need that money. I really do. I need that money. I'm done. Why am I poisoning? <laughs> Alright, this the uh, this is the Discord thing. It's a Discord link, you can click it and join. Alright, after this song, officially we're gonna adjourn. But you can add, add me in chat for any other anything, whatever. says they have had more we made one dollar and lost one subscriber so you guys earn three minutes of commercials i don't smell my fingers i touch my face did something that's a twitch did something that's a twitch got no bitch in my blood zero bitch in my blood honestly a straight life in people's faces i don't smell my fingers right that was my depression i need that money pay my bills electric bill the internet bill that was my depression. I need that money. Pay my bills, electric bill, the internet bill. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Like, why are you doing this to me? I just can't do it. Why am I talking? Get the fucking loan, boy. This is it, go away. Richard. Why are you here? How many times do I have to end this stream? Shout out to your buddy Rug. Alright, let's fade this out. Shout out to your buddy Grug. Hello. For now.